you go. You good? Yeah. So clear. Okay, what up, everybody? What up? Welcome to episode 106. Episode 106. Jump Street Podcast. Here we are. We're here. Sorry we were gone for a few weeks, but we're back. Don't worry. Yeah, it's been... We, we were both very busy. It happens in life. After all the COVID, tons of people were getting married. Oh, I threw someone's name up there. Oh, I happened to throw up my cousin's name up there. Alex Paz. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> Yes. Yeah, but it's been, uh, it was busy. I was working a lot. You were working a lot. And now we're back, back in the studio. Back in the studio. Yeah, so it, it took a while, but we gave you guys the, the uh, opportunity to see us again back in the studio. So it was worth it. Yeah. I like to be back in the studio. Uh, it's, you know, it's cool to do our Zooms because sometimes we could access people that we wouldn't normally have access to, but nothing like doing it in the studio. Of course. Right. So I guess I'll just jump in real quick. Please, if you don't already, follow us on all of our social media platforms. Go to our Facebook, give us a like, go to our YouTube, hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, leave comments, share the video. All those interactions really help. Um, we have an iTunes. Please go to our iTunes. Give us a five-star rating. If you like what you hear, leave a comment. We also have a Patreon. So if you want to become a Patreon member, it's $3 a month. We have inside outs, which are how-tos. We have three pieces. We do behind the sections. Oh, behind the sections. <laughs> It's like uh, the old hybrid VH1 behind the scenes <laughs> storytellers. Yeah, storytellers. <laughs> but um, um, we do uh, section watches with uh, commentary from uh, with our guests, and uh, yeah, we put some of that content out on YouTube recently. How to Soul Grind a Rail, I did, and mm. Austin had some st stuff recently on the Patreon. How to do True Top Soul. So uh, yeah, check that out. Yeah, there was a lot of good feedback from your how to. It was how to hit your first handrail. Yeah, but that's available free on YouTube. You get tapes for what he had on our Patreon page. We also put out the section commentary with Chris Halfley. We go through a bunch of his sections together, mm -hmm. which was um, private only to Patreon members, but now we made it to the public for everyone on YouTube to check out. So if you can, go on over to the Jump Street YouTube page and check those out. Um, I want to give a shout out to our Patreon supporters, our new Patreon supporters. This week, we have Jesse Patterson, Alphonse, Claus Ritter Nielsen, Samuel Aranda, John Kovac, Jonathan Rubin, Oh, nice. Alex, Leroy, Jordan Lawrence, and Jeremy Quinn. Thank you all so much for being a part of our Patreon community. We have 291 Patreon supporters real quick. Wow. So if you can and want to be a supporter, it'd be nice to hit the 300 mark. It'd be yeah. nice to have 300 of you in there. That'd be cool. So uh, there's a link in the description to check us out on Patreon and be a part of our community there. We get lots of exclusive content. And yeah, super thankful for everyone in the Patreon community because when things start coming on, it's going to be helping us to do a lot of these other things i don't know are, are you gonna be i didn't even ask you i'll ask you live are you going to the blade cup this year yes i am i just freed up my weekend for that i had a, a thing going on but it's i'm good to go so you're good to go I'm good to go i'm there oh so maybe we could find a, a way to do a couple out there yeah That'd definitely be cool yeah that's the plan sweet like we've done the last few years too so that'll be get, fun we get more in person there cool yeah awesome so uh real quick uh, we want to give a shout out to our sponsor for this episode which is blank by rollerblade as you all may have seen by now they just announced a new Sean Keen Pro Model Skate, which is a whole new design. And we have a really cool little exclusive video with Sean Keen himself when he was here in New York talking about it. Check it out. Hey, what's up? This is Sean Keen out here in New York right now with the Blank Rollerblade team. We're all out here skating my pro skate for the first time in the public. Yeah, we've been developing the skate for about two years right now. Worked with Kyle Solo on a lot of the parts on this skate came together really nice. Hope everybody likes it. It's going to be the first release. It's going to be a beta drop. It'll be a couple of sizes, but the whole point of it is we want the public to test these out too. They're going to be able to try it, give us feedback, and we're going to make changes to the skate for the next final production run of all the sizes. So it'll be something everybody's happy with. I hope everybody's really stoked on the skate, because I know I am. So yeah, I hope everybody enjoys this new skate. So be sure to cop a pair and try them out. Let us know your feedback. Boom, so there you go. After all these months of us promoting Blank, it was worth it because they have a brand new skate coming out for everyone to check out. I've been writing it um, the last few weeks, so we're going to put out a review, a video review on it, on uh, my thoughts and everything, and I've been enjoying them a lot lately. So, uh, yeah, big shout-out, Blank by Rollway. Thank you for sponsoring this video and this episode, and check them out on Instagram at Blank Rolling Products. The skate looks really good. It uh, is. Just shout yeah. out to Sean Keen. Um, yeah, huge congrats to Sean Keen. Yeah. That's a long time coming. Totally. And that skate looks really clean. And mm -hmm. watching him skate it, especially in New York, was just like really nice to watch. So Yeah. Sean Keen is a man. Everybody said on the comments, like, about time he gets a pro skate, about right. time, which is like is definitely true. I know he doesn't feel the same way, but he's a modest guy. Yeah, he's so, a humble guy. Uh, yeah, but definitely congrats, Sean Keen. And shout out Blank by Rollerblade. Um, 
Real quick, want to talk about mana? Yeah, we did a edit with Butter TV and our good friend Franco down in Hawaii. A lot of people had the opportunity to see it. Some maybe haven't. So if you get a chance, check it out. It's on Butter TV. Um, it was a super good time. We just randomly, uh, Franco and, and JP have been playing this trip for a while, but I randomly jumped on. And uh, it was cool because Frank has been living out there for seven years. Mm-hmm. Never got a chance to go over there and see him. And man, what a place it is, you know, and the whole scene, everybody out there, Akari and Keeney and Joey, yeah. everyone out there is just so sick. So huge shout out to everyone over there for being super hospitable. And um, I think I think JP really captured the vibes well on this because he did. It is like a really chill, relaxed. Like it's what you would expect from Hawaii. And I think when we finally saw this video, it came across very well. And he's always amazing at what he does every video he puts out so this is no different from any of those yeah. um, there's a link in the youtube description to check it out if you haven't seen it already mana a hawaii story by uh butter tv check it out because that was a real fun trip that we had together and yeah. for people who don't know we actually skate we don't just sit here and talk yeah yeah <laughs> we, we skate we do, skate we love skating do you ever get that where people are like oh i didn't notice that you actually skated because i've gotten that before i mean you're a little more d- d- well known than i am did but. you say like cesar mora like <laughs> did, was uh, um, well following he, the podcast he, he didn't really and... know who you were i don't think yeah. he didn't say he did but i got the vibe where he didn't really know who you were he right. just kept saying like your co-host or something like that when he was talking to me about it. So nice. I'm sure if he didn't know, he would have been like, oh, Billy or Fish or whatever, you know? Yeah, but then you said, like, oh, we put out, like, some edit, and he wrote, yeah. like, oh, you yeah. guys skate. Like, that's yeah. cool. He like, saw he saw some video or something that we maybe posted on, like, Instagram or something. He was like, wow, you guys are killing it. Like, uh, he was <laughs> he was thoroughly impressed with, uh, I guess, how good we skate? I don't know. No, so, sounds cool. stupid to say, but, um, yeah, we do skate. So, because I know people say that once in a while. They're like, oh, wow, that's you guys funny. actually skate. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> No, yeah, and just in general, that, that trip was just really good. Um, mm-hmm. I, I would recommend to anyone who is thinking about going to Hawaii, um, go skate there. I would imagine, I'm not trying to put out all these guys' info, but if you reach out to some <laughs> of the guys out there, they would be down for a session. It seems like a lot of, a lot of good, you know, just good crew down there. 100%, as Butter TV, JP from Butter TV would say, 100%. <laughs> 100%. Uh, we wouldn't be complete unless we had a WTF of the week, which... We do. We have a WTF from Jeremy Dominguez, I believe you say, with a insane mute backflip to sweat stance, which as if a sweaty isn't that hard already. I like that he muted it. Yeah, I think it's a mute. It's like a, it might be a mute. I can't really tell on the Instagram clip. But either way, it's still a... He did a backflip to sweat backflip stance. Backflip to sweat stance. Either so, way, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, sweat stance alone is scary enough, let alone backflipping yeah. to it. Sweat stance alone. I like how you went with that one. <laughs> yeah, nice. is, is that a lie? That's like no, probably the scariest trick that you could do as far as like a regular non-spinning into type of trick. It's There's a risk factor involved. Yeah, so yeah. to backflip to sweaty it is just another level. So shout out, Jeremy, for this week's WTF. And real quick, before we get to our very special guest, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to... Um, the 22nd annual Mile High Battle this weekend in Denver, Colorado. That's uh, the 25th, I believe it's Saturday. And if you're in the area, check it out because first place is a $2,000 cash prize. 2000 2000 Two grand. Dude, you might see Demetrius over there because he's been going and <laughs> smashing these competitions lately. You might see Demetrius. I'm That's telling you. Tour. Every time, like, there's a... Uh, yeah. uh, I, I think he, it's... He just took the San Jose contest yeah, this and weekend. He got, like, second at the BPSO. Yeah. Yeah, he's just been like going to contests and crushing it. So he might be there. Who knows? He might be there. But um. But yeah, the twenty second. There's always second. So I don't know if he's in cash for second. <laughs> so get out there. Uh, it's it's a twenty. I can't believe the twenty second. I know animal. it's crazy, right? It's a long time. That's older than most kids have been skating these days. That is older these than days. Most I sound kids. like a grandpa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. I'm the youngest looking grandpa there is out there, though. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, everyone, check it out this weekend, September 25th in Denver, Colorado. And should we carry it on to our very special guest? Yeah. Let's do it. We have for episode 106, our very special guest, none other than Mr. Mike Torres. That's you. you, you know. <laughs> do we have the sound? It, uh, it's going, yeah. It's, it should be playing in the background. Playing the back. I don't know why it doesn't play through the headphones. But welcome, Mike. Get comfortable. Now the microphone's backwards. <laughs> yeah, there's a pole there. <laughs> <laughs> your cat was eyeing me up was, I, was, I know she popped in a couple of times too in the beginning she was beginning. Gonna I was... attack me she's <laughs> like making like the, kind of this she's like the guardian of the house yeah the cat yeah she um she minds the stairs when you go up it's like 
She's like the bouncer a little bit, wouldn't you say, Austin? Yeah, that's pretty accurate. She she checks everybody before they come in. Make yeah. sure that you're you're good before you you come ID through check. the door. There's like an ID check, uh, <laughs> G check. Pretty standard procedure. G check. Yeah, that's closer to it. Yeah. But Mike, welcome. Finally, after all this time, we've been trying to get you on for a while. All right, finally. Glad we got to have you on on a live one. That's really cool. Yeah, I didn't know it was live until today. Really? What do you mean? I didn't know it was going to be live. I thought we were going to record it. Are oh, why would we do that when uh, we're just a stone throw away? Yeah, that's true. Well, is, does this feel extra special now that it's like this? <laughs> no. Because you've been here before. <laughs> this isn't your first time here witnessing like an episode, too. Yeah, that's so, true. Yeah. But now you're on the other side of the table. Yeah. Got the mic right here. I'm gonna go. Uh, all my whole thing's gonna be cross-eyed because I'm just staring at the mic. <laughs> trying to scare you guys. Well, um, there's so much I talked with you about. We just had this. Uh, you've been working on so many projects. You've been busy doing. You're part of uh, a lot of things doing with skating right now. But as always, you know, I'd like to start with. Uh, I think we had a good idea talking with Tim about what like the early days were like yeah, in sure. Rochester. But it'd be cool to hear. Your perspective, the early days of uh, how you got started skating, um, how you got on them, them boots, and uh, probably, got going. Probably pretty similar to your guys' stories of just kind of seeing it, 90s boom. That 90s boom? Yeah, okay. yeah. And I maybe saw it X Games or something, or, or, or in this or something on television, but you know, playing street hockey, hmm. that kind of shit. Yeah, just that wanting, era. Yeah, just knowing that there's something more that could be done, like... I remember wanting to like go into town into like the town that I lived in and just like wanting to like ride, I don't know, downstairs or some, just be in some kind of urban setting. And I remember also like my friends that I was playing hockey with just being confused that I had a desire to do this. Like, yeah. And that I'd had no idea of any culture of skating, obviously mm -hmm. then I just like had this like, um, desire to, be in some kind of unnatural environment with skates, I guess, you know? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but then, so that there, just came, yeah. so that just came like naturally, like you were just like playing hockey, but then you were just like wanting to test without having had seen yeah. videos or experience. Yeah. In the yeah. Culture but anyway. then I think I, when I saw that, that there was like X games, that's when I was like, Oh, this is like a thing. Yeah. Okay. And then, yeah, that's when I like figured out how to get like a pair of skates, like a rollerblade box cars. Oh yeah. Good choice. First. Yeah. Well, not like I knew. <laughs> yeah, not, <laughs> not there was many options to yeah, it back yeah, then I, also. I, I probably thought that was the only skate I could get. I have no idea. But uh, yeah, that was gotten from Dick's Sporting Goods. I don't know if they still exist. but Of course. What do you mean? Yeah, I was about right. to say, I didn't know they were around they, back then. They definitely don't have oh, blades yeah. there anymore. Oh, well, yeah. not probably, probably rec blades. Yeah. Maybe some recos. Yeah. 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 Some ice skates. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely get rock climbing gear there and camping gear. All right. <laughs> Fishing poles? Yeah. yeah. Good to know. <laughs> So you got them from Dick's, some box cars from Dick's. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, um, yeah, then I think maybe Tim covered it, but we met at a roller rink or something like along those lines, like, or the first time I ever saw him skate was at a roller rink. Um, and they were way better than me. I, I thought I was like the only person who skated in, in my town and in Rochester. And I was like wrong on both levels. And there was a whole community of skaters that were like, incredible incredible at skating and I, I always have this memory of like going to this uh roller rink with my cousin and um thinking i was gonna be like this badass it was like saturday skate night and yeah i was like probably in eighth grade and i was like gonna pick up chicks or whatever <laughs> you know because i have like sick moves and uh which is just front side one way mm -hmm. and not even the way that the flow of the roller rink goes so i couldn't even do my one move right mm. what do you mean I, front side one way like I could only front side with my right foot. Like, I could only. On front. what, though? In a roller rink? They used to skate. They used to wax this, like, rug. Not that I knew this going into it, but they would. All the skaters are waxed. Like, there was, like, a little step and then, like, a little bench that people would, like, hang out on and sit on. Mm -hmm. And all of the rollerbladers would wax, like, 30 feet of this, like, rug. It was, like, a really. It was, like, a really dense. Or, like, a really, like. It was barely a rug. Yeah. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? It was, like, it was, really yeah, thin yeah, yeah, and, yeah, like, stapled thin. in yeah, tight. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And mm -hmm. then. Um, yeah, and so they'd do like these twenty foot long royales and stuff, and yeah, I didn't even know what a royale was, and I, I remember just seeing this one guy at one point jump on this little bench that was outside of the roller rink and do a, a monkey plant five forty into the roller rink, <laughs> and I, my jaw was dropped. I was I had <laughs> never seen anything like that in my life. Like, I went from thinking I was like maybe the one of the only people who skated in Rochester 
to seeing somebody monkey plant 540 into a roller rink and realizing wow. that I wasn't shit. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's what shut you up. That's intense. Yeah. I was like, whoa. That's right. intense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and then, then I ultimately, after that, I met Tim. Uh, quick quick question before we get into that. Yeah. Um, did you try to go the other way to, so you can get your front side? Did you like try to break well, the chain? once the DJ reversed the course. Uh. Okay. Oh, then, so he would be like, boy in action. <laughs> Okay, Let it's not my side for another 40 minutes. I just want to make Ladies. sure you got your time in. <laughs> yeah, I just want to make sure you got your yeah. chops in. Yeah. You should have just sat down until that point, though. I don't think I got any eight screen names that night. No. <laughs> oh. The monkey plant 540, the kid, though, he probably cleaned up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I cleaned yeah. up. Back when skating was cool, and that was, was like. probably 22 back then. But... <laughs> Everyone else 14. So. Yeah. <laughs> it was like 12. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy oh, yeah. that people were meeting at like roller rinks back then too. Because when I when I think about that, I think of like for us, it was like remember the Sports Fest Teen Night like in Staten Island, it was like like that. Because I have photos of me and my brother roller skating in the rinks there too back in the oh, day. Wow. So, but yeah, like the roller rink days that you were able to meet up, it's not like a skate park or even on like a street spot or something like that nowadays. Right. You know, it's like specific area for this activivity, right? And that's it. Yeah, yeah. So true. funny. Um, um, so you were saying about, so then after that you had met Tim. Yeah. Mm-hmm. once I met Tim, like everything, it was like, yeah, it opened up Pandora's box of like, like all the, I learned so many different tricks after meeting them. Like I thought I soul grinded left foot because I front sided this way. So that means I must soul and Royale and Macchio, mm-hmm. even though I don't even think I knew all the names of them, mm-hmm. but I, I just thought. It's, I was so dumb. You know, I think we all were when we first started. Yeah, I just sure. thought all of my things had to be going this way. Mm-hmm. And, and obviously that's not the case. And then mm-hmm. I realized that, yeah, once I like try to soul with my right foot, I realized how much easier it was. <laughs> and then I learned like all of my grinds in the same day that's uh, on like a little P rail in, in a buddy's basement or something. Yeah. It was, oh yeah. So meeting Tim, like I, I got a lot better after I met Tim and um, this guy, Jay and my buddy, Steve Bruning. And um, yeah, that was like the crew. Way back in the day. Love the Rock Boys. Yeah. The Rock Boys hold that. They've been holding it down. Still holding it down. I know. I see all the clips everyone's posting and stuff. And, yeah. and you got them with the camera up there, too. So they're still representing even yeah, with you not still, there. They're still doing it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's no, good. that's cool. I like how you said before how, like, when you start skating, you think you do, like, soul and you're supposed to, like, Royale and frontside the same way and everything. Like, there's, like, a quote unquote rule for it, like, the <laughs> right. way you do it. Because I remember hearing the same thing, too. I wonder if it's the same way now where, because it's not true at all. Like, whatever you feel like doing a trick, whichever way, that's the way it is, you know? Yeah. There's no real, this is the way you're supposed to do it just because you sold this side. It means you top sold with the same foot. It's like, it's not like that yeah, in, in I, reality. In reality, yeah, yeah. But I was told the same thing too when I started. Like, you that should be doing like this this way. these weird unspoken rules back in the day. Like, you top sold one way. And yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. That's And obviously, as things move on and you realize that there's, people can, like, base all their whole vocabulary off the way they spin, you know? Mm-hmm, or totally. what shoulder they look over. Right. Or, um, their backslide foot or their torque foot or whatever mm-hmm. it is. Um, yeah, has nothing to do with one foot. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's true. And it's cool, like you were saying before, like how um, when you figured it out, it all clicked. I had like a similar issue too. Like I used to always, I thought I royaled the other way, like the, the lefty. Yeah. And I was like always having a problem with it, like couldn't get it really good. And then I was like, oh, maybe I do it this way. Yeah. And then it was just like, click. Way easier. Yeah, it's like cool. I did Savannah the wrong way for like 10 years. And then I did a switch in a game of skate. I'm like, that's the way I do it. That's why I <laughs> suck at this trick. I still suck at it, but still. Mm-hmm. But I feel like you, you learn, um, like when you do tricks unconventionally, untraditionally, it's better for you anyway because it expands your vocabulary in a more natural manner than totally. having forced into doing things on one side, yeah. one way the entire time. Mm-hmm. And uh, to follow that up, I learned switch unity yesterday. So. I saw all your Instagram <laughs> clips. <laughs> literally had never done a switch unity in my life until yesterday and it was so easy like did it just like unlock a whole thing no i i would do like switch forward porn that way and just kind of when i learned it i kind of based it off the torque and then i got to a point where i didn't really need to base it off the torque Hmm. and then i was doing switch unity and completely basing it off the torque but maybe if i keep doing it i won't (laughs) i'll actually be able to do the trick without like you know uh handicapping myself with the right torque foot you know but that's the cool thing about skating. Like, even we, we were at the graveyard just the other day, like this little skate park in Staten Island. Um, graveyard. Oh, it's such a fun, <laughs> oh, such the a, graveyard. Okay. Yeah. Such a fun place. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, all these, you know, you could skate forever, however long. I'm, you know, you've been skating 25 years around, I'm mm-hmm. guessing, or from what you're saying, or, you know, or right around that. Um, but you could still go out and learn something. Like, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. the cool Constant thing. Constant learning. 
training Constant ground. learning process. That's, yeah. that's, your tra- that's a Staten Island training facility. Right that's there. the training facility. Yeah. And that's, I know, to we didn't have that growing up, though. Yeah. And so you guys might have actually become good at skating. Yeah, we might have been good. We might have been one of those, like... Cesar Mora might have known who you were. Yeah, exactly. We would have been, we would have been yeah. known all the way across to Australia. <laughs> See, th- this is actually, I wanted to kind of mention this later, but I think this is like a, a good segue into talking about like the learning the new stuff and kind of the adopting like s- some of the new ways of skating that I think you've done a really good job doing. Mm. And, um, you know, especially I think in the beginning, like years back, there was like some pushback and there was the whole thing like core blading, mm. hashtag mm. core, hashtag blading. You would make fun of me every time. I would <laughs> <laughs> no, I would just. Well, you would make fun of me for making fun of core. I, I, I would just tease, would. tease it. it. Would. Yeah. Still do, maybe. <laughs> yeah I, I would just tease because it's because I, I, I think I saw what, what was happening. I thought it was funny and I was like, oh, that's that's funny. So, um. But I was just teasing, you know, I wasn't trying to be mean about it. <laughs> oh, right? I remember. No, I'm okay. <laughs> I remember that. It was also an education back then, too, or just not being aware of everything. Because I was the same way, too. Yeah, yeah. I definitely yeah, thought yeah, what yeah. you did was fucking weird as hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still think you're weird as hell, but like, yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> the tricks are like, they make, they make sense. That you think is weird, you end up doing. You thought it was weird to ride flat, and then you thought it was weird to ride rockered. I never thought it was weird to ride flat because I or, rode flat uh, back in the oh, day, no, but no, it was yeah, definitely rocker. Rocker, like, yeah. Why the fuck would you do that? Yeah, then, no. No, you do. You figure it all yeah, out yeah, throughout, yeah. you know, as you you try it and learn your own way. But yeah. But I'm not taking any credit for any of these ideas. They're just, I latched yeah. onto certain ideas whenever I did, and then other people are going to latch, may, maybe latch on to similar ideas whenever they do. And. No, but that, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. you, you kind of uh, embraced it at like an early time and yeah. were kind of taking and being an ambassador for that in, in, in your own right. Um, and I think naturally when these things happen, there's going to be like a bit of kind of pushback or maybe defensiveness. Like you got, you kind of got like, like older bladers, like mm-hmm. maybe boomer bladers mm-hmm. kind of like being like, uh, I like that term by the being way, being defensive <laughs> maybe about like their skate style. And like, um, then that's going to cause like a defensiveness on the other side and, and some pushback and mm-hmm. some things like that, which is, you know, I think a little natural would be great if we could, like, I think it's been getting to a better place where people are learning to test and experiment more and have more fun on some skates. And I'm like, oh, that's cool because it's, like, opened so many doors to it. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm curious, like, where that, what did that come from, like, the mushroom blading guys or, like, the wizard frames, like, all this testing? and Yeah, it was definitely mushroom blading. Yeah, I definitely had, like, I, I don't I wouldn't say I was like resistant to the Was mushroom. it Carlos Pianowski? I mean yeah, it was I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it was Shout out Carlos yeah, Pianowski. He was sick as fuck. Uh yeah, I you know, I actually wasn't like an early adopter of the mushroom blading stuff at all. Um but again it was the same like it was just one day it kind of clicked. I don't know what it was, but I was like, Oh my god, like what these guys are doing is is undeniable it's yeah. so it's like so raw and it's so pure and it's in the videos that they're making are so unique and so um like passionate and like yeah i mean and then, and then the movements are just like they're so like ahead of their time and they might be unrefined when they put them out but they're still it's like they're all about just like getting the idea out there right. and getting the idea out there and like opening up the like the the yeah just the i don't know if it's a conversation about the idea but like a you know the physicality of a conversation right about the, you know what I mean? yeah. whatever it is yeah. like like uh, and and there's like been ideas that i like thought were original uh that that w- once i started skating this way that i thought they're completely original and then i would like you know maybe a year later or something go back to some old mushroom blading video and realize that joey did it mm-hmm. three years before i thought i had wow. this original idea sort of thing you know and like yeah, there's, there's, it's a lot to like, t- yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Th- I think that that's what it, I just like saw how like original it was and then how, um, how easy it would be to like take these concepts and really try to like expand what skating could be. Cause I, I couldn't like, and Joey and Todd are like incredible skaters, but I couldn't, I couldn't stop thinking about what it would be like to see like really incredible, like top tier skaters skating that way, you right. know? And it was like, man, anything I can do to, like, try to be an ambassador for that is, is all I want to do. And I would always, like, try to, like, nudge people into, like, getting a little weird. I get like, at the time it was weird. Now it's just become... Didn't you make a video called Going Weird? That was when we first... Um, <laughs> that was our first, like, wizard 
in yeah we our first uh, venture into wizard yeah. skating which was like we had no idea what we were doing mm-hmm. it was it's really bad to go back on. i want to go back and watch that now <laughs> it's not it's not good there's some okay moments in it but it's not good skating it's like we were skating the wizard frames like aggressive skaters who had never like when we first got there um it was really funny because we skated from leon's shop in the first spot we skated was just flat cement outside of the science center i think it's called the science center in um in, in like down it's like kind of downtown for uh, vancouver and it was just cement like it's just smooth cement and like the the vancouver guys like Stu braddy and colin braddy and leon knew what to do they were like flatland skating and like mm-hmm. doing all these cool movements and me tim and grant were looking that we we're just like oh, we have no idea what we're doing right now yeah. and then we, we found like the first like the the only thing that resembled obstacles that we just started jumping on it because that's yeah. like all we knew because you, you know? were like still core exactly you were so core <laughs> and i was already making fun of core skating at that time yeah, yeah. <laughs> I already like, at that yeah time, everything's yeah. like a spectrum right like mm. compared to yeah. you i was a weirdo but compared to them i was a core skater or something mm. you know mm. like mm. you were in a, a limbo between yeah two yeah. realms so i, I guess maybe you, that's why the video were... is called going weird <laughs> i didn't Not think you weird. were a weirdo by the way <laughs> <laughs> I think so, but, but yeah. quick, <laughs> quick shout out to Todd. It's his birthday today. Todd McInerney's oh, yeah. his birthday oh, wow. today. So yeah, show show Todd some love on the mushroom blading. Uh, send him a message or something like that. It's mm. his birthday. Happy birthday! Happy birthday, great Todd. guy. Yeah, great, great guy. guy. Um, how long did it actually take you to feel normal and comfortable on those skates? Because I'm around still, you guys. No, mm-hmm. around you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got hazed pretty hard when I first uh, started doing big wheels, especially when I moved to New York. Uh, <laughs> But I was having so much fun, I didn't care. Uh, I could tell. So you I stuck was, through it. Yeah, I just I stuck it out because I, I really, it was just so fun. Uh, it was like, a, yeah, I just felt like I was floating. I felt like I could just do, yeah, I don't know. But how long did it take you to feel comfortable on it? Oh. Because um, you said that it, it was like you being really awkward. Like that first time you went, you well, just get yeah, empty but, lot and you had no idea what you were doing. Yeah, but even then I felt comfortable on it, but I wasn't like, I was just an idiot. You know what I mean? Like I didn't know, <laughs> like mm-hmm. I didn't know that maybe I shouldn't have felt as comfortable as I felt. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like I thought what we were doing was so sick and, and it wasn't, it was like, it was so basic and it was so like just anything that you could do on almost any setup. And I, it's like, yeah. I don't know. It, it's like, there was, it's almost like, um, like infrared light that we can't see with our eyeballs <laughs> it's like there was infrared light all around me but i couldn't see it all i could <laughs> see was like the bike rack that we were fast planting off with our big wheels and but the reality is it's like i had this like long rockered highly maneuverable very fluid very fast frame that i could like yeah like create new movements that i'd never experienced in my life and i just didn't even understand that that was something i could do you know what i mean maybe mm-hmm. i caught glimpses of it when i saw the vancouver guys doing it but i i wasn't i didn't know how to like apply that to myself yet so i was just like jumping on bike racks and like fast planning things and mm-hmm. jumping in the air and doing gaps and going up ramps and <laughs> just like all of the things that yeah. i would do on aggressive skates except maybe just a bigger wheels bigger wheels and going a little faster, faster going a little <laughs> bit or something yeah whatever and, like completely unnecessary uh technology to be doing the tricks that I was doing, you know, I could have done it on like power blades or whatever, and was doing it on power blades before I started skating a, you know, fifteen hundred dollars setup. Yeah, <laughs> that I didn't need. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's that's cool because it's like it's totally like humbling that something within an aspect that you've been doing for like twenty five years, like you know, skating and being on blades, and then being brought back down to like the beginner level again while being on blades. Yeah, like, sure. I, that's why I could see it like. Some people being like, ah, you know, or just because it takes a bit of a commitment to, to do that. Yeah, it's cool to suck at something. You it know? is. And then it's cool to get good at that. Because the learning process know? is faster than mm-hmm. when you've like gotten to like a mastery level. Yeah. Where yeah. it's like it's yeah, a little yeah. bit different. The learning yeah. process, right when you start something, you're mm-hmm. like learning. And yeah, so much. So the clicks quick. are so, yeah, it's really yeah, good. Yeah, you're going to like dial in the first like 50% pretty quick. But that last like yeah. 40 
to 45 percent is going to be lifetime yeah it's gonna take <laughs> exactly. forever. Yeah. i feel that's true yeah. in most things but i've been yeah. on, i've been on the wizard blades for a while now and i'm still at like the one two percent we just need to skate together is all like i've been a, saying that for how many years like two yeah. years something like that and still haven't because yeah. even even like in havasu i tried your skates on there too with the, the six nine wheels, wheels yeah. whatever the hell that it is nine, yeah. <laughs> it was nine at least nine <laughs> wheels but um yeah like we still haven't really skated together i feel like i need firsthand experience with it to learn i think just in general, that's the best way to do that it. That will be your version of me skating with Tim for the first time and realizing that I don't royale with my left foot. <laughs> it will be, <laughs> It'll be that. You, yeah. yeah, you will un- unlock Pandora's box in one session for sure. It's a good analogy. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, we, we just came full circle with that story. Same episode analogy. I love that. <laughs> but, um, Callbacks. Quick. Just because you brought up the skates from Woodward, what were those? They were like seven wheels, right? Like you had it something. Was, it was six. It was six. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so you had a si- six-wheel wizard frame. Yeah, they're prototypes but yeah 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 man i i I skated some well um leon actually hooked me up with a pair of wizards on some boots but they were like too small for my foot so i was like that's what he's on it fit austin's yeah that's what he's on they don't really fit my feet but they fit enough for me to tolerate it yeah Yeah. tough through it but i put but i put it on for a second and it it was still tight and i was like wow i'm like really tall up here you know what i mean i'm like (laughs) yeah yeah yeah, yeah. further from the ground than i'm Mm -hmm. used to being on some skates yeah um about 40 millimeters right (laughs) and then there's also like the which the the length is what messes with me yeah Yeah, the crossover the crossing over like i've hit in the back it's dangerous the back uh things have hit and you gotta like really it's legit dangerous no it's a completely different thing Mm -hmm. it's just a completely different thing totally and then the six wheel is even that to another extent completely different level with that setup yeah yeah, big. I I have to be careful on those, like they're long or like the five by. They're the same length as the five by nineties that I used to ride, um, which those Oof. never came out. Um, but yeah, they're still prototype. I don't know where Leon's at with if if those are gonna go into development. I I didn't actually have a chance to talk to him. I haven't talked to him in a while. But uh, yeah, I th- maybe those could get made. I don't know. They're cool. They're freaky, but they're cool. Which the six wheel? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what's what's your favorite? Is it? Two wheels, three wheels, four wheels, five wheels, Definitely six mooks. wheels, one wheel. The mooks. The mooks. Yeah, the mooks. <laughs> I, 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 really mooks. short mooks. I wasn't joking when I said two wheels. Yeah. There's two wheel setups yeah. out there. I got a pair of mooks at my house. I keep them on standby. You, you know, keep them on standby. You never know when you got to mook something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when like a tree falls down, yeah. it's like a hurricane. Yeah. You're like, damn, that's a really good trunk to grind. Yeah. Or you just find like a big set slide pad. You can just keep spinning around. Yeah. On. That's cool. Yeah. You never know. You well, never know. What, what, you what's your favorite? What's your ideal wheel setup? Um, I guess it depends on what I'm doing, but if we're talking aggressive skating, uh, I've been on four by 60 with the rollerblade hydrogen wheels, which may be now the blank hydrogen wheels, which I think are the best wheels in the market. Yeah, we were talking get... about that when I got my skates cause they, they come flat with hydrogen oh, wheels. Oh yeah. I'll, I'll pay top dollar for those. I things. know. I, I heard, I heard, I'll sell you them after like another couple months. Uh, cool. for top oh. dollar. <laughs> I was talking non-aggressive though. For your, oh, oh, your oh. Wheel. Your... Uh, like with the wizard. Yeah. I think I had my most fun on the five by nineties, which is the same length as the six Oof. by 72. And they're actually the, I think almost the identical length. <clears throat> um, but something about like the bigger wheel made them, they just float more. And then you have like, more of like the toe the whole point of the long long frames like that is to start like venturing into like that ski type movement territory where like they do um i think they're called is it i don't know if it's called i don't know what it's called actually (laughs) nose press or jibbing or something like that i I don't know what it's called on skiing but it's like obviously where they like push off their like tips and like get over things and or or use that to get into grinds and stuff like that and like i just think there's definitely something to unlock there in 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 inline skating um to use that like and i've already just from skating those longer frames like that and then i go back to aggressive like there's there's definitely like movements where i like understand my like front and back weight distribution and how i can like pop off the heels a bit Hmm. easier um it's almost like having like training wheels to like learn these concepts and then you can go back to like maybe a setup that's not as refined and really dialed in for that mm. sort of movement but you like you bring it to bring it to skills, aggro yeah and then you bring it yeah and that was kind of always like my idea with getting into big wheels and big wheel movements and all of this stuff i just like i was like whoa this is gonna make 
in like what I understand of inline skating to be just way more interesting, <laughs> like way more interesting. And, and it, and it has, I mean, uh, yeah. like, like rollerblading is like objectively more interesting than it has ever been. Like you, people may have their opinions on, on what good skating is and right. what, I mean, what, and, and how big people used to go right. back in the day. But, but I still think like, yeah, I think objectively speaking, it, it is more interesting yeah. than it has ever been. Like, it's so diverse and it's so, it's just interesting. You no, know? Well, well, like I was going to say to like, you, you said a good like, uh, like you were saying like uh, that unlocks things like the, uh, what you can unlock if you try something on the six, bring it back to aggressive. Yeah. I think in like the past, maybe even three, four, five years, so much new stuff has been unlocked that's been like in in like the the core or the aggressive aspect or like the traditional aspect um versus like wizard like you just look at you know what everyone how everyone's skating and they're using their feet it's yeah. just like just even like the the little shuffles before tricks the fast yeah. feet before tricks like you know you look at dominic bruce playing around <laughs> yeah. and he's doing like the brucey and there's all like um just these new kind of fun ways to do the skating aspect not just the grinding that's just the yeah. gaps it's like a way more open-minded approach that really incorporates the skating and the wheels more. So it's, uh, I, yeah, I agree with you on that. I think mm. we can thank the Canadians for that. Like, do we owe it to them? I think we, mm. uh, I think we 100% do. And then there's obviously the early adopters of it were, um, would have been like the guys in, I guess, I don't know if it's like technically like the honey baked crew, but like the, sh there was like Chicago era, that was like incorporating these movements. And I know Pat Ritter was incorporating these movements yeah, like really, is. really early on. Um, but I think those, a lot of those movements were, were definitely being explored like several years before anyone who was like really like um, traditionally good at skating or aggressive skating uh, was incorporating them into their skating. So no. I, I, I don't know where they, those people, those individuals got their ideas from, but I, I, I just, would definitely credit the Canadians for just putting those ideas into like the, the ether, you know? Mm, yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, those guys are trailblazers. They've been doing that for forever. a while and they kind of stuck with it mm -hmm. and people didn't know how to receive it at first. And now it seems to be kind of the, you know, the mainstream thing. Yeah. yeah. One of the main voices yeah. in skating as well too. Like, yeah, like, it's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Everything. And about it's him. his birthday. And it's Todd's birthday. Is it's tomorrow Todd's your birthday? birthday? Yeah. Damn. Oh no. Damn. Yeah. And there's no beer. We gotta get a beer after this. <laughs> we got some tequila in the freezer. All right. <laughs> it's only go. in the freezer. That's it. Let's go. Um, and then the next day is Nathan Moore's birthday. He was the one who shouted out your birthday. Oh really? Uh, so yeah. Yeah. So happy birthday, Nathan Moore, and happy birthday, yeah, Mike Torres. Happy, <laughs> happy birthday, everybody. Yeah. Uh, this this topic is one of the main things that I wanted to talk to you about, just because I know how birthdays, it, birthdays especially. <laughs> right. Um, such a such a special day. It is a birthday. Only comes once a year. You only get one, but everyone has one. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Birthdays are. We like all assholes. have one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. But the the topic of how the wizard blading, not just big wheel, but wizard blading specifically, how it helps your aggressive skating. Mm. Um, that's some one of the reasons why I wanted to get into it personally, and I know it's a huge topic because you have like a perfect transition. I know Todd does and Joey does for mushroom blading also, and it shows a lot in your skating. And you kind of talked about certain things how it did improve your aggressive skating like the way you maneuver a little bit is, is it like m just maneuverability that it would affect an aggressive skating or you think it's other aspects of it well it's the ideas as well right like oh, okay. it, yeah yeah like i and it's the confidence of knowing that i i now have this skill set of like the footwork and edge control and weight distribution uh, and all of these things to know that like to know that i could do this thing that I would have never looked at had I not spent a couple of years just figuring out some weird flatland maneuvers and getting made fun of it <laughs> for it. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, it feels, it feels like it really pays off, uh, in the end. Um, because I know that, yeah, there's a lot of like movements that I do now that I, yeah, if I just didn't take that time to just like trip over myself with oddly long frames and big mm. wheels and, show up to a session without the ability to grind you know because i would show up in my early days just on my wizards and i would only be skating with people that were on aggressive skates and were skating like a bank to ledge right or something and it's like oh and there's, there's you in the parking lot <laughs> yeah, right or yeah, yeah or i'm just skating the bank or i'm right. just yeah yeah i'm like um yeah if i didn't take that time then it wouldn't 
so it might have been like a weird dip of like like my skating for a couple of years but I, I think it was for a good reason you know what i mean um but, but yeah, so but I think it, it ultimately came back to full circle, help your plating. Oh yeah, that, yeah, yeah, and that's exactly the point. And to like answer your question was yeah, it's just not it's not even like, um, yeah, it's just even like, yeah, like the idea, like the ideas that you can come up with because you have this knowledge of like these these movements is like more interest. They're more interesting ideas, uh, and uh, and maybe ideas that I would have never thought of had I not taken that time. Mm -hmm. I think that's the short answer yeah that's a good thing to have yeah 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 ideas is a huge part of what we do it's creativity yeah. is part of it it's not just trick yeah. trick trick yeah, trick. there's yeah. a lot of creativity especially nowadays too yeah more diversity in skating oh it's especially nowadays it's mm -hmm. way more cerebral you have to yeah like i'll i don't know maybe it's just because i'm old but now i'll just like walk to the spot and i'll just like think of things for like 30 minutes like mm -hmm. can, can i do this mm -hmm. it's like it's it's all trying to think of what you can do and how you can apply it to the yeah. spot and mm -hmm. when you open up the door and like learn so many new things where you know you could even do things on on flatland like you know you see danny beer like just rip down a street and like maybe like he'll do six tricks but then there'll be like one trick will be like at like a traditional mm. ledge or right. something like that it'll yep. be like you know quick shuffle thing mm. to like uh I'll be like fast slide set slide zero mm. spin like real tucked and yeah stuff like that so it's uh just opens up the door more right yeah and Danny's a perfect example of somebody who's like incredibly athletic, can do all of the uh, traditional aggressive skate maneuvers, yeah. and, but like has this idea of all of these other interesting movements, took the time to figure them out and learn them all, and um, now has the confidence to just, uh, a confidence to just uh, incorporate them into any line he wants to do, ripping down the street mm -hmm. and yeah, weird Ses slide shuffle. I mean, it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't. He could just do whatever he wants. Yeah. You know, he's he's an in, absolutely incredible, incredible skater. Uh, yeah. He he's he's also like a bit of what could be like I guess one of those like pol polarizing figures. I feel like polarizing is like what we use for politicians. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like, that's he, fun. Yeah, he, it's, it's a good word. He is yeah. like someone that could uh, raise the argument between like a couple of different sects in the blade community. Yeah. But um. Oh, yeah. yeah. No. I and I got but I, that he could outskate every single person no, who I mean, has a problem with his skating. Yeah, it's, it's funny, too. Yeah. What was his yeah. last edit? Um, well, maybe not his last edit, but he had, did have, like, a them edit. Oh, maybe, maybe his pro skate edit. Yeah, this is his Where, like, it ended with, like, the a fast, fast slide. Yeah. yeah. And I think, like, Kevin Dowling or somebody commented saying, like, he only did that just to shut everybody yeah, up to, to show that he's still up. better than everyone else yeah. who complains about yeah. this, quote-unquote, new school style of skating. Right. Yeah. He can do whatever he wants, and yeah. he chooses to make it interesting versus what you already did 15 years ago. We've seen what you can do, and that's like the peak of where that goes. Shut me down. 15 years ago, <laughs> yeah. I could still skate. Didn't you see the monitor? No, yeah, but you, <laughs> you, 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 hit, you were hitting that stuff yeah. for 15 years, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. like what, where, what's the point anymore? You Dude, know that's what, what I mean? I'm saying. Yeah, I'm trying yeah, to like, do some like squats and recreate my, my blading. Like, you know what I mean? Make yeah. myself more flexible because yeah. like a lot of this new skating – you got to be really like flexible and agile on like those joint jointy bits, like you know oh, the yeah. ankles and the knees. Yeah, like yeah. it's, it's very a, demanding. Knees and a lot of this. It's stuff, very so. demanding yeah. on that stuff. So I'm trying to like mm. get into some yoga, strengthen those bits, maybe get some glucosamine, mm. and you know maybe mm. I'll try to reinvent my skating too. That's fun. Let's go. You know, let's go, man. I also spring chicken fish 2022. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah. No, I'm ready for that fish. Yeah. I'm ready for that version of fish. Yeah. We're gonna um, get you a pair of whizzes that fit you. Too. Right. Um, uh, uh, while we're on the gear topic kind of mm. thing, uh, you said something years ago that stuck with me ever since you said it. And I think it was like when you first moved to New York, it might've been when you were riding like the rollerblades, we were talking about you riding rollerblades back in the day, but you were like, y you're kind of an idiot. And I'm, I'm paraphrasing by the way, but mm. I was like, you're kind of an idiot for like not trying different brands of skates to see like what fits your style because you could like one skate for one thing one for another and if you just like stick with one brand because you're dedicated to this one brand it kind of like limits you in a way mm. do you, does this ring a bell at all i'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing cause it was years ago but the ideology of it stuck with me and i figured you would be better at elaborating it and i thought it was a really interesting topic to to talk about a it does sound like something i would have said yeah um i wish i would i could know what was going through my mind while i said it though but i i think it it was probably more commentary on I think my opinions in that regard has probably changed a bit, but I think you there think? is some like uh um I think there's definitely like an undeniable truth to it, like about like 
brand loyalty and just like the uh, I, I but I but I think brand loyalty is fucking good so I don't I don't know yeah but but I at the time when we were when we were probably having that conversation I don't think I had any brand loyalty and mm-hmm. I was just casting the net wide and seeing what stuck you know and like like and I was just trying I yeah I was just in a very experimental phase of skating when when I think when I first moved to New York and I and it was I was pretty lost and I was probably just spouting some <laughs> bullshit um, but I think there is some truth to it I mean just I do think there is too that's why yeah, I mentioned it because yeah. I'm like kind of in that phase now a little bit like I, like we, there's nothing wrong with brand loyalty like you said but yeah, yeah. there's just other things out there and if something looks interesting it's could help your skating a lot because when I started riding them, it unlocked a whole new world of tricks that like I was super good at like unities and royales again all of a sudden and like changed the way I, I grind. I just learned them yesterday. Yeah, exactly. Look at that. He's learning but tricks. It changed the whole way I did certain tricks and like trying and you try a different skate and you might learn some other tricks that it might help you in one other way or another. Totally. And yeah. then you you bring one to a next skate and it just helps your skating all together because you learn all these new tricks. Or you might lose something with the skate. Or you too. lose something yeah, too. Yeah. You win yeah. some, you lose some. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I feel like there's more winning than losing though, because it's easier to carry something over that you know rather than to yeah not have it in the first place. It's, you know, again, same thing as like learning something on a six wheel setup and then bringing it to an aggressive setup. Like it's easier to like retain the information than lose the information. You know, if you've yeah. learned it, now you understand the skill set that it takes to make that work. And I mean, unless we're talking, you know, shadows with insane negatives, but even mm-hmm. still, that would still apply. Like you might learn a, you might learn. That's a good analogy where it's like you might learn your negatives on a skate like a shadow that has gigantic negatives, but now you've learned them and then you can skate something like a them and you already, and yet with a significantly smaller negative, but you already learned the negative, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and it does uh, help you. Yeah. And it's the same thing with like, again, that wizard long frame or something like that, where it's like, mm-hmm. like the training, training wheels, wheels like yeah. the, the shadows are the training wheels for negatives, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Or souls or anything, totally. Grind, just grinding in general. Right. Mm-hmm. And then. Uh, six wheel or five wheel or just long w- wizard frames or mm-hmm. any of the other wizard frames um those are all just training wheels for those sort of like swervy swervy bit uh heel toe type yeah. movements or whatever it is and then you can if you want you can have take those skills and bring it back to skating and see see what that unlocks for you hmm. um I wanted to because I wanted to kind of talk about this first timeline wise, but I kind of want to bring it back for a second. Mm-hmm. Um, how did you get into filming? Because filming became such a big thing. I don't want to get stuck too much on the wizard. We can come back to it if no, you want. I mean, but, I, but I actually am curious to know about like um, how early on your filming started. Because as far as I know, you've been filming for forever. Yeah. So um, I know I know that ties into back to like the beginning of your story where we kind of started. But I kind of wanted to go back there for a second. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, hmm. because you've seen my work of filming Austin before. <laughs> I heard you've you needed to critical. prove yourself. He's been, oh, he's been, he's, he's been semi critical of of my work, which I, mean, I don't know. You know, I rewatched that edit, and it was actually good. Uh, your filming was good. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I, after we had that conversation, I rewatched. Oh, did your you? edit? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So <laughs> the, the, the edit, the Jump Street edit. Yeah, where you guys skate the big thing that you were just showing. I mean, me, it needs work. Thing. It needs work, work. You know. Mm. He, yeah, I mean, no, it was good. It was good. He's helped me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was good. Okay, so I'm sorry. Go ahead. How long have I filmed? How long have I been filming? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's probably the same exact story as you guys. Yeah. As, you know, I was, um, I don't know, in high school, or like maybe a freshman in high school. And um, I, I know I've told this story before and I don't know where, but basically my buddy that I skated with was like this, he was a, he was a badass and I was a dweeb, but we both skated. So we were friends. Like, you know what I mean? He got into fights and like played hockey he was basically like you in a way like he had he had like this like tough guy like thing going on but we were in a small honky tonk town or whatever and like i'm a nice guy so when when (laughs) tim when tim was on here and he was saying i was like a badass like that was like by proxy Mm -hmm. because i like hung out with kids that like smoked weed and stuff but i was a fucking (laughs) dweeb yeah i didn't so you were like the chill guy that was hanging out with like the wild yeah yeah and and uh but he um yeah he he was in detention one day um, cause he was a badass, obviously, uh, so he was obviously, in detention. obviously in detention. Yeah. yeah. He lived in detention. Yeah, he had his own yeah. seat. So he had, he had to take a different school bus home. Um, cause it's different buses, yeah. obviously. Is, in it, the later is it a detention school bus? Um, well, it's like your normal bus is at 
to whatever and then you stay for detention and then it's a new set of buses so he like, <laughs> the bus number was it was just a physically a different bus yeah right? i never knew that and um so he gets on this different bus and we used to have this thing uh it, it, back in the day they were called bus cams i don't know if you guys had these here in staten island but like they're just like these cameras that were in a box with like a two-way mirror and a blinking red light um this is in the 90s and uh and uh you never knew what was behind those things honestly it was just a <laughs> box you know <laughs> and it could have been nothing and that was always the joke like this is just an empty box with a light and <laughs> they don't actually see anything and he gets on this bus and the box was open and it was like a sony handycam like an eight millimeter handy really? cam no in there way. yeah and, and your buddy's a badass he's a badass <laughs> yeah. so i guess he remembered the bus number uh went back to the lot uh you know crawled under the fence like kicked the door in ripped the fucking camera out and uh that was her first camera no nice. way ninth grade yeah and that's have been filming skating ever since like have not stopped <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah we had to get a battery because it was being oh, charged saying. off the bus yeah so, like that was yeah. the only thing and we tapes had to get. tapes yeah tapes and battery did you get like a fish eye or no eventually tim tim got the fish tim because tim ended up getting his mom ended up getting a camera and i still have that camera it's a, at my apartment right now and i filmed I, like i filmed stuff on for seconds on that i filmed stuff for the powder promo on that like i still use tim's mom's camera every uh, once in a while on some awesome. projects yeah wow um but but that was like a high like she you know that was like Ours was like this shitty eight millimeter camera. His was like a nice high eight camera. And then his mom eventually buys him a fisheye. Like Tim, Tim was like in the well off part of town. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, me and this guy whose name I won't name. Cause I've just, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sure the statutes yeah. are up on that. Yeah. Statutes of limitations on yeah. stealing a bus cam. That'd be over 20 years. I don't know. You know, I, I was, I was going to ask, um, how, how's he doing this guy? Um, <laughs> what's he up to these days? I think he's got a family. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's I can use a camera. Right. Yeah. I can use a camera <laughs> yeah. if he's still around. Maybe he's up if to he's his still old in the ways. business. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> you never know what's in school buses yeah. these days. Yeah. Invite him to B&H, see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Invite him to B&H. <laughs> uh, yeah. Then, yeah, so anyway, yeah, that's that's when we got the fish eye. Um, yeah, that was... Then, then, then shit, then shit, shit was the going fan. off. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. So, so what was the first video you made? Oh, I just finished it last year. It was called The Next Movement. That was the first video. The first video we made just got finished in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Did you actually finish it? Yeah. What? Yeah. We released... All right. Yeah, like we released it. In... Yeah, it was sick. I saw that. Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I remember someone talking about that recently yeah. too, but I didn't know that was like a serious thing. Yeah, it was like our first video. So most of that is like it's like remastered or whatever like we never finished it and like it was my section that didn't get finished so i like went through i bought like this black magic thing to basically make it easier to convert like analog tapes into and capture them like digitally mm -hmm. and so i digitized all of our high eight tapes for no reason it was like <laughs> pandemic so what the fuck else am i gonna do right. and like i kind of like lost my mind uh doing it because it was just so insane to like inundate yourself with uh, multiple two-hour tapes of your adolescence and prepubescent fucking voice right <laughs> and that's sick shit to have yeah. though yeah it's cool it's now i have it all digitized on like yeah. google drive and yeah it's cool to like have you know um but yeah so i but it was i just started kind of like goofing off with tim like through text and i was just like i'm gonna finish the next movement and he's like you know fucking do it you know yeah. whatever and and yeah so i finished it it's pretty badass yeah, it, is, it is really good <laughs> so your first project was finished in 2020. Yeah, it took us uh, 20, 20 So you're pretty new to the game then, years. I see. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be filming for a yeah. year. Yeah. Got one year under my belt. <laughs> <laughs> filming sections with yeah. Alex Brasco. Yeah, yeah. One year under your belt. I finished sections with Alex Brasco before I finished my first skate video. <laughs> but Eat what that. was your first actual release then? Um, like on DVD, I guess. I guess I was, I'm thinking of like bitter cold days when you were yeah. slanging videos. Yeah, there I was, forget what that one video is called. There was a couple. There was like one called "While You Were Sleeping." Yeah, yeah. but was the one before sleeping, that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, 
It's a really bad name. Was, was, it, like like tan, part, was it like a tan yeah, box? Yeah, it was What's called the name? Physical Phenomenon. Yes, that's what it was. Physical Phenomenon. Really bad name. <laughs> you didn't even want to say no, it. No, that's a really good name. <laughs> you didn't even want to say it. Yeah. That's a really good name. Yeah. Physical Phenomenon? It's a powerful Depends name. Depends on what you're describing. It's pretty good. <laughs> a powerful name. There, that was the era yeah, but that's of like, powerful skate video yeah. games. <laughs> it's, it's cool. Exactly. Apprehensions. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, it was, yeah. Everything like was Brain Fairgone just came out and you were like, how can I top Brain Fairgone? Yeah, everything was very serious. Yeah. Very, very intense. Very serious, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That's the one physical. That's what I remember from you. Like, right, I guess around the time when I first met you, maybe. Yeah, it would have been around then. Yeah, it would have, or maybe right after the video that we came out with right after that, which was while you were sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But what's cool about that name is it, it could either be a, a skate film or it could be a, a porno. porno. I was going to say, yeah, yeah, I was gonna say it depends <laughs> yeah. on what you're describing. Or it could be like, maybe like, even like a really like high end like gymnast type of film. Like you know what I mean? Just like the perfect specimen. <laughs> it's actually my CrossFit video. Yeah, okay. It's a CrossFit video. It's an exercise video. It's a good it's a good name. I'm just saying that as multiple uses, you know? It's, it's pretty a good. versatile name. It's, it's a versatile name. name, yeah. Um yeah. So yeah, you've been making some things for a while. And I guess you finished your first project just recently, but you had a, a bunch earlier. What's the Nothing. name? No, continue. Yeah. Um yeah, so Past that, past that. You've also been working on like a lot of projects recently. Like as far as I've, you know, for the past few years, you've been pretty busy. Oh yeah, yeah, mm. super busy. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Yeah, I, I, like you want like you've been putting out like great uh, parts online with like sometimes with magazines. Like Seconds came out with like a magazine too, and mm. all these cool things. Like, how did you get into working on all those kind of things? Um, I guess I just asked. Uh, yeah. But I, um, I kind of like, I had a, I always had like full-time jobs and I could never live that like vagabond lifestyle that all of the filmers and skating seemed to somehow survive doing, <laughs> you know? Somehow. Uh, yeah. And I, I just never quite understood it, you know? And then, um, well, AJ lives in, lived in Kansas. That's why that helps. It's like $300 mm-hmm. for a yeah, house a yeah, month. Yeah. So that could help. No, just for a house. No, for an entire house, yeah, three hundred <laughs> for a plot of land. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, yeah, and then I, I actually I got let go from a job in twenty seventeen or something like that, and uh, damn, that long ago. Yeah, it was a while ago. Yeah, um, and yeah, this I just is in kinda, New York, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I just kind of like was like, well, do I find another job or do I freelance for a bit or do, maybe I take a little time off and like focus on. Like, what if I just focused on skating? And, like, and that's kind of, like, what I, yeah, I kind of, like, wrote out the rest of 2017 just because it was, like, towards the end of the year anyway. And then 2018, I kind of, like, made a list of, like, projects I wanted to do. And, like, I think I did, like, all of them. Uh, no Physical way. Phenomenon 2 was on that yeah. list. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's uh, the only one he didn't get to yet. It's it was definitely, for... like, one with Alex and one with Keen and one with Leon. And I, yeah, and then maybe it was, like, one thing I didn't get to or something, but, uh, but yeah, I, like, I was just, like, yeah, I'm just gonna film, I'm just gonna, like, try to, like, set some shit up with, like, really, really talented skaters, and I was, like, I've just been plotting this city, skate spot-wise, for, since I've lived here. Right. And I, I still am. And it's, like, all, forever, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and I'm just, like, I think if I were to, like, work one-on-one with the most talented skaters in the world i could probably make something pretty and like just dedicate 100 percent of my time to them not not splitting it with like some full-time job or something like that mm-hmm. like just just them you know and then that i could probably make some i bet i, I bet i can make something good like that was kind of my my thinking mm-hmm. you know what i mean and and um yeah and i just yeah i just kind of reached out to alex who i like kind of knew i didn't we didn't know each other that well um and but we got to know each other after you know 14 sure. intense days of, or i don't even think it was 14 but whatever it was like a 12 intense days of filming mm-hmm. uh, like every day and night or whatever it is like yeah you get to know somebody pretty well totally and, yeah and yeah it was it was cool. how did that conversation go was there a lot of convincing with that or or no because yeah. i know alex is a very picky person very particular about his skating and especially his filming too to make it look a certain way yeah, I don't know if it was a lot of convincing. That'd be a better question. Were you like, him. come on, Alex? Yeah, no. Come on. I actually tried a. Ri- so that was what was interesting is I think when that happened, when I got let go, it was in October, and that was when Sean Engler was getting married, and I knew he was 
I knew Alex was coming to New York anyway. And I think the original text that I sent him or the message, it wasn't even a text. I didn't even have his number then. I was on Instagram and I was just saying like, I know you're coming to New York. What if you stayed after uh, the wedding and me and you just like work on a project for a week or something? In my mind, I thought a week was enough time. It's definitely not enough time. I was, that's how like amateur I was at that time I'd, I just I had no idea what it would take to make a full like VOD um, way not not a week it's it's more than a week for mm-hmm. sure um, like Alex could do it in a week but not no like but it's better to give yourself some more time especially totally. in New York yeah. and um, especially in New York yeah for sure. and then um, and then most people can't do like skate the way he skates like every single day yeah and and really hard. yeah it's like yeah, it's it's just different, and mm-hmm, I, I totally. kind of like learn. I eventually learned that as well. Mm-hmm. Like I, I didn't know that, but then I realized that it's yeah. a learning process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, but then that wasn't gonna work out. Like his schedule, like it wasn't gonna work out. So I was like, well, whatever. Winter is gonna come. It's it's this year's blown. Whatever it is, but let's if you're into it, let's talk in spring. And I thought maybe he was just being nice and saying, oh yeah, sure, maybe whatever. And then spring came around, and I was like. Hey man, I'm like looking at tickets, Seattle, like I can fly you out. I don't know. Do you want to do it? How do you feel? And he's like, yeah, fuck it. Let's go. And like, and then that was Mm. it. Yeah. It's like not that interesting of a story. It didn't really take that much convincing. I was like, I don't know. I think he just knew that I like plotted spots like a lunatic. And Mm -hmm. and that's what I was curious about. Like how he knew your, who you were as a person to trust in you. When they were filming for the dead video, they stayed with me. And so I was like pointing to the I was pointing them to spots a little bit then um and then then they came for something else I think it was Angler's wedding we filmed a little bit then um I mean like hours before the wedding basically it wasn't <laughs> yeah yeah like like we're almost late to Angler's <laughs> wedding because skating. <laughs> Alex was doing this wall ride this like kinked it was like on con- a construction site mm-hmm. wall, you know, the green walls they always put up and yeah. it was like a kind of a wall to wall and then gaps to a, to a over the sidewalk or whatever it is. And it was just one of those things that like all of the different circumstances, it just took like a thousand tries. Yeah. And we were just like, I think the ceremony's <laughs> starting in a little bit. Like yeah. <laughs> it was like really, I think when he landed it, we like reviewed the clip and we like shut and just fucking threw everything in the yeah. bags and like AJ is like running back. Like it was crazy. Oh my crazy. God, that's yeah, so funny. Yeah, it was kind of funny. Did you make it? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, Dripping sweat. Nice and sweaty like yeah. uh, no, no, like we the had hangover time. We all had time. Yeah, 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 I was about to say yeah. it's the same exact thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we made it. It was good. Um, That's cool. Yeah. But yeah, so, so but that just to answer your question of like, yeah, we, we like kind of knew each other and so, you know what I mean? We just, we weren't like super close, I guess. Yeah, because at that yeah, point, yeah. Yeah. um, I mean, I, I'm probably wrong about this too, but I feel like Alex didn't really film many people besides AJ. Well, full profiles too, like yeah. full sections, you know? Yeah. So that means a lot to have you film it, you know? Yeah, I definitely felt, I yeah, I felt like, you know, like, I guess like, I don't know if the word honored is the right word to say, but you know what I mean? Like, it was just like, I think oh, that's it, the right word. It was, yeah, it yeah. was like, yeah, it was like, it felt like part of like an exclusive club of yeah. people that get to like film with the best talent in the world or Dude, whatever. I was one, yeah. one of the best ever. Ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you know, objectively if yeah. not the, you know, so he's um he, so that was that was like yeah, that was cool. Um you know, Taurus, I, I would let you film a section of me too. So you could add that under your belt right. also. I think that was the one name he didn't get to. He scratched Maybe. off everything. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I think I forgot one. It was He you. did blow me off that one weekend, yeah. you know. In two thousand eighteen. <laughs> was that it? <laughs> that might have been it. Yeah. Um I'd film with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you want to make make the next Jump Street edit? Well, you already got something going with JP, so you got to... Um, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I was so. talking to him earlier today about it. Yeah, We got to finish that up. Yeah. You're, yeah. I don't know why we'd want to film with me when you got the most talented skate video maker eager to make projects with you guys and what you guys just look how nice he's shutting know, you down so... <laughs> look how nicely he's just he's just laying you down nicely I'm making you think it's your idea to not use me <laughs> no. oh man it's brilliant but let's talk about more recent projects then too because you just put one out now bodega boys just came out a, a few weeks ago yeah correct because that's a nice little concept considering it's like a new york video mm. bodegas is a new york staple really well Chopped done cheese. by the way extremely well done really well done it's just like the it captured the new york vibe really well that was key. it was it was one of the coolest new york skate things i've seen mm-hmm. and um 
I just wanted to say, after, and I sent you the message in Spain, I was going, is, is, there, do, is there a bodega with my name <laughs> on it? And yes, there is one in hey, Fordham, Billy's. Deli, oh, Billy's, Gro- Deli. B- B- Billy's grocery in Deli. Yeah, so, yeah. so now you have I'm to have a section. If there's a sequel, next one. I'm just saying if there's a sequel, I can get like one or two clips. That's all I'm saying. All right. I'm just kidding. But. <laughs> Shout out to you in front. <laughs> yeah, but um, seriously, that was really good, really well done. Um, you and uh, Augusto did like so much, and everyone who skated in that was just uh, it was incredible, man. Mm. It's good work. Well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, and Augusto would probably thank you if he was here as well. He, uh, I told him. I told, him. I told him when I saw him. I, I think at a, I saw him at Young and Grumpy. Yeah. And I gave, gave him oh. a tap, and I told you know he was oh, fo- that's focused the on about to watch it. But I was like, mm-hmm. no. I mean, afterwards it was like so many people and all that. And I was mm-hmm. just like, yo, good. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people forget to give him the credit he deserves. He's uh, he he made that video for sure. Um, yeah. He he's he was an integral part of creating that video. Uh, I mean, we both were obviously like, yeah. we, we, but we both made that video. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's couldn't have done it without him. Was that a concept that you started with, like you wanted to do, always wanted to do in New York, or was that something that came throughout the what's, filming process, the that? bodegas? Like- uh, that was, I think, Ryerson, Alex Ryerson, and Christian Delfino came up with that silly boys name. Yeah, it was just <laughs> like some. It was meant to be like this kind of a joke instagram for like our our goofy skate park sessions right shot on the phone mm-hmm. with like silly captions mm-hmm. and funny antics and you know and that's all it was and i think it was the beginning of 2020 that augusto said something like we should make a bodega boys video and i thought that was a great idea because especially since augusto was declaring he was the one that wanted to do it and i was like oh great mm-hmm. i don't have to pick up the camera nice. like <laughs> i don't have to be the guy that's making the video i could just skate in the video and then film you know i can film augusto or yeah. i can help but i don't have to be like this doesn't have to be my burden yeah. you know and and um so i was all i was all about it and it and i just thought it was funny to create like a very serious skate video out of like such a not serious concept uh, of of bodega boys it's just like a such a silly name well I, it, I think it's cool because perfect. it like really encapsulates like you know new york culture exactly like bodega is or like, like tries it's, to you yeah know, you know what i mean like that's the lowest hanging fruit of new york culture in a way like, no, like but, but so are we we're skating in the streets yeah we're skating <laughs> you know in the streets I mean? you stop by a bodega so every like, time you're yeah. at a street session so yeah like when i saw all the when i was like uh saw like i wasn't in new york during the bps sub when i saw everybody here um, like everyone from Cal, and everyone was just like chop cheese this, oh, chop God. cheese that. They're already in the comments. Like, they learned about cheese. it on Instagram, so yeah. they had to go yeah. get it. It's like, yeah, so um, I never had a chop cheese. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. Billy, have you had a chop cheese? No. Whoa. No. Yeah. 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 Exactly. That's no. that's what's so funny. No, like, that that's is so pretty fucking funny. funny. Yeah. 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 Like, I was thinking about I have having that bacon, a th- egg, and cheese, though. So yeah, yeah. I was but. thinking about having it the other day because, like, you know, I do want to have one. But I was like, let's go get some right now. All right, oh, later, we'll everybody. We'll 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 part, part two tomorrow when we're done with yeah. our chopped cheese hangover. Shit in our brains. Oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I feel like that's for like the young kids. Chopped cheese. Yeah, it's like a cheap bodega. But the strong stomachs, you know yeah. what I mean? Before that, like, I don't know. But we would we would have had that back in the day instead of the dollar dubs. Of course, yeah. <laughs> the dollar dubs were our shit from McDonald's. Oh, the, oh, dollar oh, double double cheese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We called them the dollar dubs back then. But I want to talk about how you get how intricate you get in with the production of your skate videos because it's not just like you film, you edit it, and that's it. Like you go through a whole color grading process. You have like an audio guy. You have like a graphics title guy. Yeah. It's like a whole thing because you were in the production phase of bodega boys like for a year or some shit yeah i mean the video was done for a really long time um but not like to its final form but it was well that's what i'm saying it's like you're but 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 that's not why like the finishing process is not why it took long there was just some other other things that were like delaying the process but uh of of actually taking the final step to finish it but Mm -hmm. um but yeah like it's i just i mean i worked in like kind of commercial video and stuff like that for long enough to know that like it makes a real difference when you have like a professional color grader finishing your project uh so uh, and i know i mean edwin rodriguez is in the video and he is a professional color grader uh and he's like yeah fuck it i'll color I'll, yeah if you ever want your skate videos colored i'll do it and i'm like okay cool and then Perfect. Then sound stuff. I get like I actually did the sound in in Bodega Boys um, or in Enter the Bodega rather. Um, but for last or like the last few videos, um, I would use like 
professional like sound engineers. Um, what goes into the sound for escape video? Aside from the obvious like click clack sounds. Yeah, it's like for me, I just started like reducing the noise like of 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 stuff and just kind of like bringing that really like lo- I would just start noticing it in like other people's videos. Right. Where just like it's ri- man, I wish wish they really dialed that sound in i wish they took like a little time to like dial that sound in because it's like it takes sometimes it's just like distracting i don't even know if it's because like i'm I'm starting to notice that too like these last two three years i'm just like very like uh, like yeah yeah it's like grating on the ears a bit you know and and i'm not saying like ever like obviously there's a lot of videos that are like really sweetening the sound and, and actually taking time to 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 dial that in but um but there were certain projects that i like really loved that didn't take that and there was like this one little element of watching it like oh god like i wish i wasn't hearing that bus just like roaring in the background while you know what i mean especially in new york that's a common thing Mm -hmm. too or i remember when we filmed like a long time ago in in oakland Oakland Mm -hmm. and everybody was doing the generator thing back then and they would always leave the generator sound in there and then with you do you remember Mm -hmm. i would make you do all the tricks without the lights Mm -hmm. And then I would just lay in all that sound afterwards yeah. without the generator going. And Damn, just like fake that's what it. you did? Yeah. That's so you cool. didn't know that? I remember you no. told me that too yeah. when you did it. Yeah, yeah. I and said that? No, I remember Torres told me that too because I watched the video. And I think I might have said that to you too because the lights were on and this was before everyone was using LEDs and stuff like mm. that. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned that you did like take the audio from other clips and put them on top so there wasn't a generator. Like a yeah. yeah. I think Except it, I would make you do like the easy version. Like, like I think right. you did like true front alley of unity or something like that mm. and and on like that outledge yeah in, in, in oakland or whatever but like, yeah 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 and then i i don't know i probably just made you like royale some other yeah. oh yeah you were just like, I, I just like i just needed the sound I, I, I think of your I did, like, blocks grinding yeah or i did like zero yeah. front alley yeah, yeah, or something yeah something like really simple just but, yeah, yeah. I, I that's cool that's cool i, I think um I, I do remember that but like Back then, I uh, I think I was just so like I wasn't conscious of those sounds at that time, right. and you're obviously that's, a filmmaker, and that's okay. Yeah, that, that's that's fine. Like it's it's it that's um, no news <laughs> is good news, right? Because it's like yeah. if if somebody doesn't notice that the sound has something fucky going on, that's good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, the last thing that you want is somebody going like, "Well, what's going yeah, on exactly. here?" And then they've already like you've lost them because now they're busy thinking about like wh- and whether it's the generator sound that's annoying to hear because it's like drowning out the music or whether it's like i don't know like you did too much to the audio those are they're on other ends of the spectrum but they're both equally as bad right yeah, like, totally. like you, you've just i might have missed a trick because i was too busy thinking about your generator sound or i might have mm-hmm. missed a trick because i was too busy thinking about like all those crazy sound effects or whatever it is which you know some of my videos have maybe a bit too much of that but you know, it's just good perfect it's just good to be conscious of all these things because yeah. like i feel like you know and and you too like and maybe some part of like the ether the ethos of this conversation has been like the gro- the growth of like awareness in skating like you're at mm. this one part where it's just like so early and like unrefined and primitive and it's like oh we could learn how to use our feet differently we could play with our feet in this way we can uh, experiment in this way mm. oh we could pay attention to these sounds not just the tricks because i think it was hyper focused on like just the tricks back in the day yeah and now just yeah. to like see all those other areas be addressed is like actually we're maturing it's cool yeah 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 it's funny it's so like you're obviously a big help in that too man That's... well i i try uh, <laughs> but yeah thanks Thanks. I'm not, I'm not going to do it, man. I can't do it. <laughs> I've seen your fish eye work, though. Okay, it so it actually, I can't. <laughs> that's not why I can do this. I was just being humble. Did he, did he show, him, obviously did he show him all the chasing you know, fish eye shots? I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> did you I'm show him kidding. all the chasing like, fish eye shots from like the city and stuff like that? No, I didn't. But uh, those no. are like, we'll go over it later. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll dissect it. <laughs> we'll, we'll have a Patreon That'll video. That would be a Patreon. And I analyze Billy's fisheye. That would be a good Patreon That'd video. That would be rough. I, would, I, I wouldn't be able to sit through that, to be honest. I'd Everybody on Patreon, stay tuned. We have a new uh, series coming out. It's called Torres Critiques People's Filming and Skating, <laughs> <laughs> who aren't filmers. Yeah. That's, uh, cool. But that's cool that you're going to you're gonna watch your Oakland video now with like a different mindset, knowing that the audio yeah. is completely different. Even I haven't watched it in a while. Anymore, I, will, I will watch it. Is it? I don't know. It's not online. All the, well, I might have I might have had Vimeo? a copy on my personal Vimeo, mm-hmm. and I think I unlocked it. Like this would have been years ago when yeah. all the USD stuff got deleted, um, but I think I I just had it private. I'm pretty sure I unprivated it 
Did oh, I say nice. that word? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> private. 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 Private them videos, you've done the, the Alex Broskow things, mm-hmm. you've done not your own projects, Bodega Boys, Nights and Weekends, stuff like that. What's mm-hmm. been your, your favorite project? You, you worked on something with Billy. What's been like your favorite project that you worked on or favorite type of projects that you have worked on skating? Maybe the stuff with Leon is like, I was thinking Wizard Blade and stuff. Yeah. There's like, we made one called Disembark uh, a couple of years ago that was me and Leon, and that one um, still feels. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't want to say special, but it, it hits yeah, home a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I really, yeah, like that. And then the, even the one that I made before with him called the Church of Leon. Mm-hmm. Um, that one felt really special. You too. made a lot of Leon videos. Wizard of Wall Street too. Uh, yeah. What well, Wizard of Wall? Yeah, I made one, two, three, four. I, we made like a small edit after Blading Cup uh, in 2019. Um, yeah. So some of those moves, like honestly, go go back and watch that. I was like, I watched that and I think because I just had like such a, I think the first time I watched it, I, uh, my, my brain is still just, it's still so like boomy and, and like <laughs> and core that like, I just like was like unable to understand yeah, like yeah, a lot of yeah. like, I was like, oh, that's cool, but I don't really understand it. Right. Where are the tricks? And then <laughs> where are the tricks? Well, you waited five minutes for the first you trick. Didn't grind, yeah, you didn't grind, man. You actually did. <laughs> you didn't grind, dude. Yeah. Um, but then like, you know, I, I watched it a few more times and. I actually went to some of the spots like because a lot of it was filmed in New York, mm. well, it was and all filmed in New York, yeah. like that stuff. Yeah, um, both of them. Uh, t- yeah, t- yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, well, like yeah, both of those were filmed in New York. Okay, there's some spots I was like, yeah. where is that? Okay, cool. Yeah. So that's um, good. That means I'm doing my job. Nice. Yeah. Because <laughs> you didn't grind anything. Um, damn it. <laughs> that that one spot on um, what was it? It's like Broadway and uh, Rector, just like where he just like the one foot on the bench, like where they have like the knobs yeah. and things. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I just remember like going there and like trying that. <laughs> like then I was like, "Yo, you did a fakie, dude!" Yeah, I was like, "That was." Yeah, he's done. He did some uh, really cool things in that. So and then and in the Church of Leon, he did it when he had the five by one hundred millimeter wheels, which those what? never came out. <laughs> but he filmed that whole piece in five by one hundred millimeter wizards. In in that video, he went to like a slightly shorter one at Rector Street, or whatever the benches, mm-hmm. and he popped up on his toes and then that's right the toes. That, that's the toes. that's what it and was kind of like slapped his yeah that was that trick i was talking insane. about yeah it was the toe like, thing mm-hmm. yeah insane just rolling through it is like yeah feet. yeah seriously yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah so yeah you got to go back at those videos and look at a lot of the stuff in there because it takes more than one viewing to understand what's actually happening sure yeah and i've done that with a lot of the mushroom blading videos and we even when walt was here we watched a bunch of mushroom blading videos too we binged mm-hmm. it for a little bit too yeah and every time you see it it's like you see with new eyes, no matter how many times you get to watch it, yeah. especially if like see someone like me or like you maybe who like isn't as aware of what's going on. Mm. It's always something different. You yeah. point out every time you see them. It's kind of like rewatching like uh, an old show and then picking yeah. up on jokes. That That's exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that you, you're like, oh man, that was so so much funnier. Like or like a movie when you were a kid. It. Yeah, and it's... then you watch it now, like Sesame Street, all like the crazy shit yeah. that's happening, or whatever. Sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's mm. kind of cool. That, cool that cool. we get to experience that in skating as well. well. What was the one Leon totally, video you said? Totally. That you, the first one? The first one that we made? No, the first one that you said that you... Like, oh, it's called Disembark, and it was like... I don't think I've ever seen that one. Yeah, it's a, it's like the first, like... Well, that's why he was here when you guys interviewed him. We were filming Oh, that, that. one. Mm. That was more for his stuff, right? Or something that like was, that? was... What do you mean? I don't know. I, I remember, like... You, I, th- I think you didn't even tell us what you were actually filming Cause together. Because we maybe didn't quite know. Yeah. We, we, it sounded we, super... We, yeah, we were low key. We thought we were, f- well, yeah. Basically, we were filming like the first official wizard video, I guess. Like, okay. and so that's what disembark was, um, if if you will, you know mm-hmm. what I mean. Like, like we, if, if you, you want it, if, if you want to call it that, but <laughs> but that that was like that is what we were making, um, yeah. And it was just me and him in it. I think the only reason I hesitate because I think like a really sick, like first wizard video would be like a real like 
you know, like a Vala for life, but like all on wizards, you know, like, yeah. like you get like the best people from all over the world. A wizard, like, a wizard tour. That would be really like, cool. like a, I mean, we, like a wizard brain it, fear honestly. gone, you know, yeah, yeah. wizard fear gone. Yeah. Wiz fear gone. Wiz fear <laughs> gone. <laughs> Dude, I mean, and then like the, that could the really fourth be some riders <laughs> silhouette, <laughs> and it's Billy. He's been no, holding dude. out on us the whole time, dude, just like <laughs> low key practicing the whiz. Oh my god, that's so funny. <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> Boom. You'd blow Boom. so many minds. Yeah, yeah, that would um, that would be the validation that we need. I'm kind of bummed because like you've actually exposed it because that's something I was working on. <laughs> it's okay. Take the wind out of my sails. Doesn't matter. No, but um. <clears throat> Yeah, that would be something. That's actually interesting, like, of a thought. And because, mm. like, it's still so, like, unexplored, like, a lot of that area, or it's so new, and it's been refined to to a degree, but the, the ceiling's still so high there, so okay. it's really interesting, like, what could be there. But it does it does feel... Um, I, it makes me nervous sometimes to make him, like... Uh, like, to, to put so much weight on them, because sometimes I feel like we still are at such, like, a an early stage of like what is capable on these things that it, it feels like it feels crazy to make the brain fear gone of wizard when we're not totally sure if we're, we're actually brain fear gone uh level of wizard skating yet or yeah. you, you know what i mean but yeah. when brain, brain fear, fear gone got made it was like it made sense like but they didn't really know that when they were making it i feel like maybe they knew i mean like they kind of knew they, but it wasn't knew. like when it I think when it hit, it hit harder. There was than an they unabashed knew. like cockiness of the skating that was taking place in that video. It was like it was it was defying convention. It was like we stopped grabbing. We balance our fast slides now. We, I, I was gonna say we might use our hands, but that was more like words or whatever. Yeah, but I wanted to bring that up earlier when you were talking about like the mushroom and wizard stuff getting get like into hated it. on. Or I just wanted to make one quick comment mm -hmm. because like. Latimer's words section was like very yes. polarizing when it first came out and it's oh, easy yeah. for us to look back at Latimer with like rose colored glasses but like what did you think of oh, that when it came out because you were a little more I thought you, it was weird which I one thought it was I mean, words words, words. Okay. Yeah, yeah, words yeah yeah and when he's like the fast planting trees and stuff and it was more of the planting. second section but I think right. both were kind of like that too right? but again it was just like he was because if you go back to it you're like it's insane dude I, it is insane like, i i clearly did not like that section too when it first came out because the same thing we we're like oh, oh really i mean not like didn't like it but it still didn't really get it because it was nothing like his brain for yeah. god section yeah but right. I've, I've watched it you know, years ago and like five whatever seven years ago and that and on another level his accidental machine section i appreciate a lot more differently too but mm -hmm. definitely words was a complete eye-opener watching yeah. that again because not only was it like it wasn't just different, but just looking at what you do and put yourself in the, in his skates. Mm -hmm. Like most of us can't do anything close to the shit that he was doing. And he also had to come up with those concepts. Like gapping that, over like, a rail to set slide a wall, right? Like, yeah, what, like yeah. what the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, for, for, I don't know. Like, I'm, and that when that part came out, I, I just like loved it be, because I think he had like one foot in and one foot out. He right, wasn't like yeah. as far as he was like mm -hmm. during like accidental machines or quality. Mm -hmm. Quality, like yeah, and, yeah, and quality, yeah. he was like a bit like that further up, which was still because I was such a huge fan of him. Like he could like as like he could do no wrong. He could do no wrong. Yeah, like yeah, I loved yeah, everything yeah. he did, but yeah. that words part, like um, I think he did like. Just like if he if he just went from like brain fear gone to something like accidental machines, it might have been tougher to transition for people. Yeah. But I think in words, he saw one foot in, one foot out. Mm -hmm. He was like, you know, grinding his car, then you know, blasting the three hundred and sixty over but, like a, a you know chest high yeah, wall. Yeah. Barrier like, you know for what no I reason. Mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah, and it's yeah. just like, oh, okay, he's still like a savage in there. Like, mm -hmm. but there's also like this like really cerebral element that's like creative and uh, original. But it's brought really, a lot of elements to the it's table. It's really easy for us to look back on that and and say that now. Sure. I think mm -hmm. at the time it was just like, it was still like, yeah, what is this? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I think it's 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 mm -hmm. it, we have the perspective now to look right. back at that section mm -hmm. and, and realize that he had one foot in and mm -hmm. one foot out. But yeah. at the time when, when I think a lot of people were watching it, it looked like he had just lost his mind basically mm -hmm. you know i he, i think he, a lot of people thought that because he was like skating his car too like damn he's skating his car <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. too is what he is, okay why is he messing his car up? <laughs> like, like we were a little <laughs> older back then we might have been asking that question yeah, versus exactly. like you know like hey man I, you need somebody to talk to <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what i still thought like bladers made a lot of money i was like dude this guy's making so much money he can uh, yeah. destroy his own yeah. car yeah, get yeah, a new his one character in the, yeah, in the uh thing wasn't it that he was like this how, he's like this A-list actor guy. Yeah. Right? Wasn't that the plot? I, I mean, remember. I don't know if they 
had characters, I guess. But yeah, they were characters. Some, I mean, yeah. Yeah. And I know Shane had like some sort of yeah, of course, mastermind behind it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Latimer was like the like the celeb or mm-hmm. something like that, and then Feinberg was like the rich guy, and that then, lost it all. Yeah, for, right. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Farmer was like the ch- choir boy. Yeah, yeah like the, the good boy. Kid, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, and then who lost it? Was there one more person? No, no, it was just three. No, Kashima left, dude. Oh, that was yeah. like a one-hour video with <laughs> three, three people. people. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> was there a friend section in that video? How of much course. skating? The friend yeah. sections were always so bad. Oh my <laughs> god, that's fucked up to say. <laughs> so, well, they would like choose like really bad music and like like uh, what? Was, I mean, it was like I don't remember the friend section in words. That's what I'm trying to think. It was about. like I remember on a steel Forgone. horse I ride. Oh, that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It was like oh so, well, yeah. Okay. And then the other one was Michael, Michael Jackson. Jackson. I mean, no. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, whatever. <laughs> beat, it's great, but yeah. it's still like not skate video music. Skate it just video. didn't fit in yeah. the whole vibe of it. It was just so odd. That's, you know? that's like, true. I, I completely. I mean, I guess that does make sense because I completely forgot what the song, what the section was in words, the friend section. Maybe the idea was to differentiate them from the team, right? Like to make like this hokey. <laughs> bullshit section and then when you go mm. back to the team it's yeah. like fucking these are like, serious this is why we're, why we are. The yeah <laughs> these, these, these are serious serious dudes and these are their friends yeah yeah and, and they, they suck they, <laughs> they suck <laughs> they're not that serious <laughs> our guys very serious yeah, <laughs> yeah. well it worked yeah I mean, they, they sold me <laughs> they, got, they got me good yeah <laughs> I think one way you could see how, like, the Latimer's section in words wasn't really perceived as good as it was was because people didn't really mimic his skating like they would other people yeah, skating. Coup d'etat you know? Latimer got mimicked a lot. Words Latimer? Yes. Maybe a little Exactly. Less, yeah. that's, that's what I'm saying. I think it's, people started dropping the grab after he did. Oh, before but that, that, was, but that uh, was Brain Free Gone. Uh, yeah, that's a good way of doing that. I'm saying yeah. words. They all, the words dropped, they all dropped the grab. Ah, yeah, that right. was, there was a uni- that was like, that's what I was saying. They kind of went in with, like, this cockiness, like, Elliot, Shima, Latimer, all they all just dropped the grab, grew their hair long, and hmm. fucking yeah, just like everything they were doing was like they were the ones that were doing it, yeah. and it was almost like they went into it like knowing that everyone was going to be copying them after that, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, no, like from from everything <laughs> I heard, skating. from from what I heard from everyone and Shane and Aaron and all of them, and D- Dustin was basically like, we're gonna change skating. Yeah. Which is sick. Yes. Like to, you Imagine need that kind that of confidence yeah. to sick. like be that figure. Mm-hmm. You know, you she must have something similar to that too when we had him on the podcast. Yeah, then, dude, if you know if you have any ex- experience with him back then, it was he was mm. like that. He was just mm. like, I'm gonna win level. this contest. I'm gonna do this. I'm the I'm like, damn, that's sick. That, you know, damn. So anyway, I'm, I'm very self doubtful. I'm very insecure. I don't so, know if wizards yeah. are at the brain fear gone phase yet. <laughs> but that's, we can get there. Yeah, but maybe. I like maybe how they we tied are. it back into the wizards. Yeah, yeah. Wizard but that's gone. how that whole conversation yeah. brought up. Yeah. When exactly. do you think that time would actually come, though? Because the way we, the way we all look at it now is like mature minded people and adults now that we're not kids anymore. I feel like we always think we're progressing. You know, yeah. uh, we never really feel like we're either in our prime or I don't know, just like the sport is in its prime, maybe, mm-hmm. which they might have felt back then, and they in one way or another were or we're not right about but with wizard it's like is this ever gonna not I, hit that point i think it i actually because that I've, i have i haven't had any time to like formulate these thoughts i'm like only thinking of this right now but i do think since there's so many um i don't want to say wizard knockoff but <laughs> there's a lot of not wizards out there like Metal, companies yeah, yeah, right okay. and and i think there's a it, lot of not wizards out uh, there and it's going to make the whole that whole style of skating mm-hmm. because it's all good like cuz it's all wizard mm-hmm. it doesn't matter i don't care what like logo is on the side of it like they got the concept from wizard and the type of skating that is going to be performed in those things is going to be called wizard skating i don't care if it's an endless frame or a what i don't even know the other names but like i i don't care if it's any of those it doesn't matter what the technology is. That style of skating is, is universally basically going to be called wizard skating from now on. Mm-hmm. And so whatever, it, do, it doesn't matter what yeah is there. But what I'm saying is that like, that's just going to become like ubiquitous enough that there's going to be a lot of, yeah, there's going to be a lot of people doing it. So then when you assemble the team of like bra- the brain for gone team of wizard skaters, you actually can change what is being done because it isn't just us doing it anymore. You know what I mean? So that, that like we, I th- 
yeah, again, I'm not, I haven't formulated these thoughts, but I, I, I think it is possible to make the brain fear gone of wizard skating like soon, maybe not right, right yeah, now, but I, like soon, because there's, there's at least the lot. hoax too. Can we do the hoax? <laughs> yes, that's, that's like a level maybe one. Maybe that's of what it. Wizard of Wall Street was. was the yeah. hoax too. Okay, so there Touring we go. So, New York, so we're on our way to Happy Tree, eating pizza. <laughs> so, <laughs> l- so let me ask you this then: if if, if the brain fear gone of wizard blading is is around the corner, who is your roster of skaters Ooh, good for question. the brain fear gone of wizarding? I mean, I w- I would think it would be people that I don't even know yet. Mm. Um, that you haven't seen skating that, that yet? I haven't. Yeah, that I don't. Who's people whose names I don't know yet? Um, but why do you but say it, that? Because, I, again, it, part of it being, like, as ubiquitous as it is, is that there's a lot of people that are experimenting in these movements right now. And then the talent pool is just only getting higher and higher because just more people are doing it. So there's going to be people that are way better than me mm-hmm. experimenting with it. Like, I don't have to be one of the, like, people in the video. Like, right now, if we made it, I probably would be. But it doesn't necessarily mean I'm that good or that much better at anybody right at doing it. i'm just one of the only people right, that that has been doing it for a while so eventually people are going to get up to this level and then even beyond this level and they're going to start and then leon would be the same thing it'd be like you know would like leon would probably yeah like leon would obviously be in it stuart Braddy would be in it like he's a canadian he's like one of the original people who like pioneered all of this stuff um um I mean, Joey, Joey McGarry would be in it because he's like invented like so many movements on it and experimented with so many different ideas. Um, but then there's like a handful of guys that like don't even really mess around with the wizard much anymore. Like, like you know, Jin Q uh, in, in Korea, uh, Jay Cabeth on Instagram. Yeah. He, he, he like deleted his whole Instagram, but if, if well. his original Instagram like he deleted his old old Instagram, but his original Instagram was a lot of like big wheel kind of like slalomy sort of wizard stuff, and it's like insane. So you you kind of see where he actually got all this crazy floaty footwork that he does, and, and incorporates into his skating, what makes his skating so special now. Hmm. And then there was even a period when he was like, he actually got a wizard setup. I don't know if he still has it, but like he he would be somebody that I would want on the roster. I, I don't think he skates wizards anymore, but he, that, that talent and that like, yeah, like that, that style that, yeah. and that look like he, that would be somebody, but again, I, we're thinking of something that like, isn't quite ready yet. So mm-hmm. I, you know, I don't know. Yeah. It's hard to answer that question. These are just people who's, who's wizard skating off the top of my head is like really, really impressive. It's interesting to think that you would, wouldn't even know the people who would be on that list. That's how yeah. far out you're thinking. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, it, it's true. Maybe I'm not even the one to make the video. Like, maybe it's somebody, like, understands this concept. In another either. dimension. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Damn, you're right. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about all these crazy things now. I'm thinking now, like, what if you gave 2000s Dominic Sagoa a, a pair of wizard blades? Yeah, I've always thought that. Yeah. Hmm. And Do you Latimer sleep over too. this? Uh, no, but in the early days, I, I would, like, think about that. Like, I would think about Latimer in a set of wizards and... Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and just like I think he he could you could like he could change skating. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean that's 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 mm-hmm. the idea. Like, yeah, yeah, you could change skating, and it has changed skating. Yeah, but already. like really putting that level of experimentation and talent, and not that Leon's not that. Like Leon is that. Like mm-hmm. he he really is like an extremely gifted skater. Yeah, <laughs> like for even sure. if you look at he's one life. of my favorites. Definitely, he's up there. Like old aggressive stuff is really insane. Mm-hmm. Like on if he was like filming with like navran back then and not like whatever toronto guy he happened to be filming with where the footage probably went yeah in some canadian video that nobody saw or something <laughs> like he probably would have been like really well known back then like he was an, an incredible aggressive skater but i'm glad that 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 didn't happen because he might not have developed into the skater that he ended up becoming and experimenting and changing skating basically he changed That's skating. True. yeah yeah uh, he, a little he, butterfly effect in there. Yeah, totally. <laughs> he has one of my fa- favorite clips, like that one where he just rolls up fakie and then just cesses down that bank. And oh yeah, that's yeah. just and like the coolest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just the coolest looking. Clip. That whole yeah. section is yeah, yeah. one of my favorite sections of all time yeah, too. Yeah, it's yeah, really it's uh, one of the big wheel sections. Big wheels too. Yeah. yeah, but his his Wizard of Wall Street too was like one of my favorites. Also, that's kind of reason why I asked you that too, because I know you have a different outlook on those sections also, because you were there and you made them and everything, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you look at the whole skating in general differently than I do, but. Wizard of Wall Street, that was a really cool section. And I think probably the way it was filmed, too, was really cool. 
Mm. And uh, glide cam. <laughs> yeah, I remember you borrowed my A7S for that. I think because no, there's, that there's was night. for disembark. Was it? Yeah, I thought it was before that. That was for disembark. No, <laughs> so you borrowed my camera for a video that I might not have it's seen. Yeah, <laughs> you should watch it. You see what you see what you created. <laughs> okay, am I in the credits? Uh, probably not. I don't want to see it then. <laughs> <laughs> you should be though. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Rental. <laughs> free <laughs> i don't care rental fee free. i just gotta watch it though yeah um should we open it up for questions we could start opening up for questions zero it's crickets i know we have a bunch of super chats in here so give me a second to gather all these things together i would put enter the bodega on that list as well though as far as like favorite videos yeah favorite videos that i've been able to make yeah yeah it was it felt um, necessary to make a video last year because we'll never see New York like that again. Yeah, I, totally. I, I hope. Yeah. Ugh. Uh, Please. And it gave us purpose. Mm. Ah. That's cool. That no, that video came out incredible. Can I talk about one of the clips in the video? And I don't mean to call. Um, who filmed the clip of Ryerson with the big knife? I'm curious. Me. <laughs> Man, that was a big knife. Dude. A big knife. <laughs> that was not a small knife. <laughs> that was a huge knife. That's why we slowed it down when he like turns around and the knife starts flapping. Yeah, like, that's the thing. I was bit. like, that had to be like risky for the trick, like a little I bit. I guess right? it's in leather. It's I don't in leather. Know. Okay. I don't know. It just was like a funny thing he was doing that night. He just skating with the knife. So funny. Yeah, and he just like we just kept doing it. I loved that clip yeah. so much. I remember just like watching that and like seeing that clip cover and be like. Are you kidding me right now? It's so stupid. Yes. No. <laughs> it's so good. No, it's like yeah. great. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah it's I, thought it, I thought it was really good. Yeah, like, at, like it's part of the It's part clip. of the trick. It's yeah, part, it's of, part the of the trick. Totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's like when someone has like some like something floating off in like the background or something yeah. like the tail or something yeah. like that. Yeah. It's like a prop comic. It's a, <laughs> He's a prop skater. <laughs> He's Gallagher. Yeah. <laughs> He's basically Gallagher. He's Gallagher. Yeah. Okay. I hope the first three I'm, rows are wearing their plastic. Okay. No, definitely not. Huge shout out Ryerson. His skating in that video was really good, too. Oh, man. He threw yeah. down. Yeah. Everyone, it was cool to see um, Edwin. Oh, we used to call him Omar, I guess. Oh, yeah. yeah. Omar Rodriguez in there, yeah, too. Yeah. But that was cool seeing his stuff in there. Come oh, back yeah. to skating a little bit. Yeah. He's yeah. Been skating a lot. Yeah. That's he's cool. Killing it. Nice little crew out there with everyone. Yeah. Fortunate. For, fortunate to have all these all these dudes that were um we all work in like the kind of like photography and film and commercial industry so we all kind of like universally had nothing to do all last year mm -hmm. uh like we we're all unemployed mm -hmm. um so that gave us something to do like we made a video in the empty that's streets cool. of new york city and uh and that's all we did and like that's all we focused on and yeah i mean i yeah, not not kidding when I say it gave us purpose. You know, there mm -hmm. wasn't really much to be excited about. Yeah. Um, and it was scary to be in New York then. And it was really weird. And yeah. And it just gave us something to, yeah, just be excited about. And, you know, yeah, we're wearing masks and the photo and the clips and stuff like that. But yeah. we, we, nobody knew. It was man. the early days. Yeah. Dude, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. And, and like we were, it was, yeah, we we're, we we're, we're making a calculated risk by even skating. Right. Like, it could be argued that we shouldn't have been doing that. Uh, I disagree with all that in a way, because people said that too, when I was like out doing stuff, shooting photos, skating in the middle of the pandemic, it was like March, April, stuff like that. But mm -hmm. like, when you think about it, it's like one of the more safe places because no one was around. We were like yeah. the only people out on the streets. The argument was that the emergency rooms are already filled up and yeah, you're right. going to fill it up potentially by breaking your arm or something. Exactly. Oh, and that actually that. happened. Like I'm going to put Ryerson on blast. That actually happened. Uh, the clip's not in the video, but Ryerson was skating this like loading dock and he like fucked up this trick and there was like a spike sticking out of it and he fucking put a hole in his shin. And he, but he had to go to urgent care to get it like looked, it was a hole. Like they couldn't even stitch it. Like, yeah. I think they just cleaned it and that was it or something. Well, and like, um, but, uh, yeah, so that was like that, but that's the risk. But what's interesting is that it was early enough in the pandemic that the urgent cares weren't even backed up because their urgent cares couldn't do anything in the, if they weren't, they weren't testing centers back then. Yeah. So the urgent cares were completely dead. Like they, they had nothing to do. He, he was like, yeah, I walked, I was done in like 15 minutes or something. Oh, so it was actually yeah. good luck. <laughs> Got yeah, lucky. Give, give them something yeah. to do, I guess. But uh, crazy. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, yeah, it was, it was a risky thing, but we, it was, I think it was calculated to some degree and yeah, there was nobody on the street. So like mm -hmm. it, it actually like 
weirdly felt safe to be out that was my argument when yeah, people yeah. started telling me that too i was like there's no one else out here yeah i'm more safe here than yeah, yeah. anywhere else pretty yeah. much right and it's silly it's funny to look back on the footage because there was nobody out and we're all wearing masks but we're wearing masks around each other it was just a weird we just it makes sense knew. wearing masks around yeah. yeah no one knew back then i don't normally read comments but i saw one comment on the enter the bodega that was like making it was I don't know. It's basically saying how absurd it was that we were wearing masks and that it was like bad for our physiological health or something. Uh, it's probably just some anti-masker or something, but it was just like, right. I'm sorry if, if you weren't in New York that time last year, no, I, I, right. just, 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 I'm not going to tell you to shut up, but I'm just, just know that there is a perspective but shut up. that you don't, <laughs> you, up. that you just might not yeah. have because it, it felt extremely precarious. Definitely. Like just, just, being alive in yeah. here <laughs> in mm -hmm. that in that time it was pretty gnarly yeah yeah, yeah. a lot of that was uh I, I wasn't around i came back in may but in may um it was just still like even taking a plane was nuts mm -hmm. like you know may, what I mean? Kept... may 2021 or may 2020 may 2020 oh that's that's, that's still crazy that's, that's yeah that's in the heart may and yeah. august yeah, yeah. August, twice that year yeah mm -hmm. wow yeah yeah but yeah um so anyway, yeah. For, anyway, for it that was reason, no totally. That video is like gonna have to just stay up there on like. No, of course, yeah, and like epic for, time and people in, with in the life. comments too would saying something about like anti. It's like like you said, it's like the hindsight thing. It's like you could look back at brain fear gone or words and be like, oh, look and appreciate it now, and also look at, look back and be like, oh, that was a precaution you didn't have to take. But like you said, during that time in the beginning, it was just so much of uh, no one knew, mm. or yeah. if it lived on surfaces, what was going on, what you could touch, what yeah. you. I remember not wanting to it changed, touch it, anything. It changed dude. every week. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it changed every week what yeah. you could, couldn't do. Yeah, I, I will say though that the masks, like last winter, was like the first winter where I skated when it was like freezing or below freezing, and that was because of the mask because because it kept you warm. Yeah, it keeps you really yeah, warm. You're yeah. breathing in warm air yeah, yeah, instead yeah. of like the yeah. cold air. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, it was multiple times where it was like 20 degrees at night skating, and I was like, this isn't that bad for some mm. reason. But the mask changes everything. Mm. So anybody who's skating in the freezing cold, the mask helps. I'm gonna wear my mask for the winter if I start skating like that again because mm. it was a, literally a game changer skating in the winter. It was yeah. nice for riding too. Like I would put the mask I would imagine on so, riding yeah. and it's just like you keep like you just got this feel like a ninja out Yeah, there. I would imagine. It's nice. You need that. Brasco, yeah. Justin has a, a clip in Nights and Weekends where he's wearing a mask. He's got like a... He was a pioneer. Like a supreme mask on. Oh man. Yeah. Some might say he's but a pioneer. But his nose, he's got like a slot for the nose so I don't think that's, <laughs> that's the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's get into some of these super chats real quick we got a super bunch here chats. super chats are you ready i don't know am i i don't know i, th I, I guess so the first super chat comes in from a mr i don't know if i'm saying this right <laughs> ivan narez uh, oh no i don't know do you know who that is <laughs> yeah i've heard of him um no question just super chat just uh, okay. send 10 bucks and like we say with um all of our guests we split our super chats with our guests, so half of it will go to Mr. Torres himself for whatever he wants to do, his future endeavors, maybe. Who knows? Beautiful. A nice new mask for the winter. Winter's yeah. coming up. Yeah. Birthday tomorrow? Birthday yeah. tomorrow. A little birthday, birthday present. present. Birthday yeah. dinner. Oh, he's holler, nice birth let's holler at these super chats. It's my birthday. Holy oh, shit. Let's hey, go. Yo, let's get these super chats going. Come on. <laughs> ben Zerforce sent you another super chat. Also, no question again, just straight super chat. Uh, Billy, Must be for my good looks. It has to be. Gotta be. Or maybe you. It's not me. <laughs> Speaking of him, his cousin Jay O'Neill sent a super chat. It said, Boston misses Jeremy Raff. <laughs> ah, yeah. I mean, we absorbed him in last year. Absorbed him. But he also now lives in Connecticut. Connecticut, right? Mm -hmm. Even closer. We're going to see a lot of Jeremy Raff. That's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. That is not a bad thing. We have a couple of super chats. Obviously, 99 cent from Chad Hornish. Uh, <laughs> we have... Ben Magaziner, jars in the chat, says, uh, excellent podcast episode with a top skater. Mm. That was a very uh, unbad Magaziner type of comment. <laughs> it, wasn't, skater. it wasn't belligerent enough. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's entirely accurate, but thank mm. you. You're a top skater, man. Yes, I, I just think you're a top skater, too. Uh, Jason Reyna said, no I'm question, just sending Mike some love. Jason Reyna. No question, just sending Jason. Mike some love. Jason was in town the other night, but I, I, was couldn't, he? I couldn't meet up. I was fucking dead. Oh, thanks for fucking calling me, Jason. Yeah. He'll probably be in town. For, like, he's, you know, he yeah, works he on does. planes. He'll yeah. be around. He works, he works on, on planes. planes. Yeah. <laughs> he works in planes. 
Not on them. <laughs> <laughs> Super it's chat. Under the plane. <laughs> yeah. Imagine Reyna. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually 007. He's hanging on the, hang on, on the wing. Yeah, hang on the, on the wing. That's He's what, got that's Alex's what. belt, but it's a monkey wrench. And not <laughs> a... <laughs> uh, what were we up to here? Imagine Reyna covered in grease. That would be fucking... Oh, what a I, I can see that. I can see that. <laughs> okay, Eric Miller. No question, just sending some Mike some mustard. All right. Uh, Eric Miller is so sick. He is really cool. So he is. sick. He always posts a really good one clippers on Instagram. Oh He's always God. skating the most interesting spots yeah. by himself. Yeah. And but... filming it like cinematically. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> He's incredible. So humbling. Scott mm-hmm. Max says slice money and Mike Torres is a G. Flame emoji, flame emoji, flame emoji. Doesn't sound like there's much questions. That's good. Well, you won't be mad about this one. <laughs> Chris Deister sent a $200 super chat. Shut up. It said cheers. That's why he said cheers. Who? Chris Deister. 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 How do you spell it? D E I S T E R. Thank you, Chris. That's Thank a very you, generous wow. super chat. Round for the you. lads. Dude, let's go. Holy moly. <laughs> wow. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. Oh, wow. Damn. Wow. Is that what's the biggest super chat you guys have ever gotten? Maybe that. It's been in the hundreds, maybe like in that maybe vicinity. That. Yeah, yeah, something I like think that. that. Maybe. Take eat that, Chris Haffey. <laughs> in your face happy take your two hundred and fifty thousand dollar <laughs> juggling earnings or whatever that was yeah. <laughs> juggling talent earnings. super talented yeah, super guy because talent. all he did was juggling when all that money throw a football through a hole yeah the... i didn't have to do anything <laughs> <laughs> so shove it <laughs> you might know this person rob silcox oh yeah ever had a sloppy steaks <laughs> at trufani's uh, yeah, but they wouldn't serve it. I had to pour the water on the steak myself. What? Oh, uh, I get it. <laughs> is that from? Do you? Um, yeah, did did but they y- served you a steak and you spilled some water on it? Is that from the show? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. What What's it called? I think you should. Leave. Hey, I think you should yeah. leave. Yeah, yeah. We were okay, We were joking it. about how many I think you should leave. Uh, <laughs> references I would just subtly drop okay. throughout the pod. I didn't do any. But, uh, <laughs> I went with my girl to Hibachi place, and they were doing that too. And we're like, "What the fuck are these kids doing?" And they told us that too. And we probably watched it too. I'm sure Justin made us watch it in Barcelona oh, or something. I'm obsessed with it. Um, big super chat from Joey Skinella. Says, "Happy birthday, smiley oh, face." Joey, big Joe, big hugs from Joey. We love Joe. We Stand do love Joe. Should have stopped. Should have stopped by. Mm. Has some pizza with us just now. We still have some Joe, more. come by after this episode. Bring Let's the kids. Go. We'll See get some pizza. Bring the family. Bring the kids. are definitely sleeping now. <laughs> it's 10 o'clock. Yeah, it's nighttime. Yeah. Uh, Apollo, you, Joe. Apollo Balda says, mm. happy birthday, Torres. I got a whiz set up. Let's hit up Fort Green Park. Let's fucking go. All right. Damn. I, I met Apollo a um, couple months ago, actually. Cool guy. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Apollo. Yeah. I want to get on a whiz session, too. At Let's Fort go. Green, too. That'll be... I don't know where he's talking about in Fort Green, but I'll go. Top of the <laughs> stairs, probably, right? That would be a bad area, but we can go into the forts. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of cracks and yeah. people cross-fitting. Mm. Oh, yeah. A lot yeah. of people boxing and sparring. Yeah, doing their morning it's workout. turned into like yeah. the unofficial ground totally. for all of the things that shut down yeah. during COVID. A lot of people just saw Rocky. They go there. Yeah. yeah they see right. the stairs. Yeah. Like, close right. enough. Yeah, close enough. All right. <laughs> That'll work. Uh, yeah. My computer is the worst right now. I'm trying to load this up before it's I all this say. marble and wood backing you got. Yeah, I know. I'm re- I love the looking at the back. It's I know. So I, I've nice. been staring at it this whole time. <laughs> I just want to rub it. <laughs> right, just the marble. Yeah. All right. Super chat from Yandril oh, Silverio. Yeah. If I said your last name Yandy. right. Yandy. Yandy. Um, I enjoyed the live podcast. Thanks for telling me about three to two ratios, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Did I? I didn't even know I told him that. Yeah. Do you have like a that, theory on? No, no, it was just <laughs> that's the aspect the enter the bodega was. So it wasn't four three. It the was, whole thing? It, yeah, it was three two. Was it? Mm. What was yeah. the reason for that? Uh, just because I wanted to. I don't know. He's such a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> just because? Just because? Yeah, it's a little wider than four three. Uh, it's two numbers that make sense. It's ten eighty by seven twenty. It like just make I don't know. It's just cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. And four three is like maybe I didn't catch would, that. would cut off all the vignette. Um oh, or a lot of vignette. it. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I just I and then it's the same aspect as like photography like the photography uh or like some of the photos that we might use um for different things. So 
Mm. Um, yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I chose three two. Interesting. Suck it. Interesting. <laughs> Chris Haffy. Yo, come on. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> now it's getting targeted now it's targeted <laughs> where's the camera um, oh shout out Yandreo by, by the way for, um, <laughs> yeah shout out Yandreo for um, the win at the BPSO oh my god congratulations yeah, yeah we haven't had Animal. an episode since the BPSO you made this... oh we haven't have we no no we haven't yeah, so right. huge I didn't think about that. shout out to Yandreo okay that was... and you made a comment earlier about Shima would be like say something like I'm gonna win this contest mm. and then he would win the contest and from what I've heard from some inside sources, Yandrell called. He he did. He called it. Fucking Babe Ruth. He did it. Yeah. He put, yeah. <laughs> right out there. Yeah. He, wow. he, he he called it that he was going to win that contest and then he won it. I mean, the trick, the the just him. Sometime. Okay, like the trick he did to to win it was, and the skating of all day was incredible. Mm. But one of the things that was uh, got me the most captivated by it, he was skating toward the thing. And his eyes were yeah. just like the most focused. I was just like, dude, That's this him, guy is That's in him. the zone right now. He was he was in the zone. He's there. an intense figure. Yeah, yeah. Mm. it's yeah. He's he's totally like for, he first of all it looks like Joaquin Phoenix. Oh yeah, and who is an intense he, figure? He's all he, he's all he's like the nice Joker, right? He's like he's like the mm. I don't know. He's like very intense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I we, feel like the Joker was nice before like the world spit on him. Mm. So just everybody be nice to be, be nice to Andrew. Be nice to Yandy. Just fucking because <laughs> you don't want to know what's on the other. His side arms of are that. big too, <laughs> oh, so yeah, you don't want to piss big, him off. He's a big guy. Yeah, <laughs> he'll fuck you up. But he's a, he's a, he's a sick dude. So yeah, sh- shout great. out Yandrell. That guy's sick. Hell yeah! Thanks, um, Yandrell. Thanks to everybody. Wow, this is crazy. That's a very, Still no question, but that's what I, 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 I was about to say. Actually, I was about to say if everyone has questions, don't be shy. Uh, we have another super chat from none other than Butter TV. Oh no! He said birthday whiskey neat. Oh. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> he would send you some liquor right now yeah. if you could. You know he would. The technology's not there. Not yet. We'll get yeah. there. Boost through. I'm the hoping we can get there. USB one day. <laughs> through USB. How we transfer you? I How we transfer you a, a, a shot? Oh man, I love JP. <laughs> he He's is the best. We are lucky to have him. We are. Okay, so here's a question. Mm. Oh. From Nathan Moore. Oh. You ready? Oh, yeah. Dog costume contest there. What's Uncle Leo wearing? Uncle Leo's his dog, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, Named after Uncle Leo from Seinfeld. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the the idea that I... Because there's a dog costume contest in Fort Greene, which is probably why he's uh. <laughs> mentioning that. Uh, I got to go to this contest. Yeah, it was, I went one puppies. time like right when we first got him and it was pretty <laughs> cool but then i think it was like the week after i i thought of like what the perfect costume for him would be mm-hmm. and this is gonna be so corny by the way just pair yourself okay i'm ready yeah. i'm ready i'm ready uh you know what my dog looks like yeah. he has like one white paw mm-hmm. so i was thinking that i could fabricate some kind of like silver kind of can tube can and make the lettering in it he would be a can of white paw <laughs> Okay. It's a pun. Okay. <laughs> I, I get it. But that was that's the answer to that question. That I was get it. that was the a can of white paw. paw. That's funny. I like that. But that's the sort of it's things that we're winning. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, creative. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, oh, that, I probably would. Oh shit! Sorry, did I mess up the camera? Dick. Um, I don't know. I'll oh, see you okay. in a second. All right. Um, I was playing with the rug in case people don't know. Uh, cameras are on the rug. <laughs> Very amateur. I would have never done that. I mean, listen, yeah. we're only at our 106th episode. Yeah, we're still learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe at 200, <laughs> you'll, get it, still, you'll get it right. Once we get to like 500, <laughs> we'll get it, you know, together. Uh, yeah. Thanks for the question, Nathan. Best uh, Super 8 filmer. I learned everything. Really? Uh, about shooting film from him. Yeah. He shot all of the seconds. All of the stuff in mm-hmm. seconds was Nathan Moore. Incredible. Mm-hmm. He had like did not hold back on what he was shooting either. Like he shot eight rolls of film, uh, or eight cartridges of film, uh, mm-hmm. for that project. Um, <clears throat> is film dead? I don't think so. Because I've seen a lot of hashtags that suggest <laughs> that film is not dead. Yeah. What, what's the Can hashtag? You confirm or deny? Not dead? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Can you confirm or deny this? Uh, I use it. Okay. I know a lot of people <laughs> yeah. use it. A lot of people I really respect use it. And, and it looks look, good. I think it looks cool. Yeah, it does look yeah. really cool. It adds a nice aesthetic into different projects and nice texture. 
It's expensive. Theater. It's expensive, but I think it's worth it. Yeah. Mm. Would you ever make an all film skate video? Never. Never ever. Sorry, Yvonne. Well, that, my, we'll let Yvonne I mean, do that. I mean, yeah. Yvonne, well, Yvonne has never done that still. Has he? What are you talking about? That's all the Hermano stuff. Oh, Hermano says. I was thinking of the Puerto Rico one that he never came out with. Yeah, but he, he made the first Hermano. The Puerto Rico was, I guess, the second one. Okay. That was when we went to Puerto Rico, mind you. I don't even want to think about it. That was a long, <laughs> that was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, wow. That was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. But I'm sure it's still coming out, right, Yvonne? Wink, wink. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Yvonne has clips of me filmed from 2010 that are just... Before that, I think. 2008 like eight? oh yeah. yeah 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 like it was normal bill days yeah some of my best skating that i'll never do again it's just on his computer never to be seen love you yvonne but <laughs> i i am that person in a lot of my friends lives yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah i have i have, been. I have, have like been. projects that mm-hmm. have been shelved uh for years and years and years and years and they will never see the light of day. is az10 coming out mm, no <laughs> oh <laughs> az12 what was it oh no az10 came out 11 didn't and then 12 definitely didn't <laughs> so it's two years 12 i've never even looked at the footage <laughs> 11 you never even dumped it on your computer <laughs> <laughs> it's on the sd card somewhere yeah. <laughs> uh yeah at least 11 i like made an attempt and i edited like i had like 13 minutes of it, minutes of it done and i 13 just, minutes it was like long already and we were in like game <laughs> two or something it was like insane and i think we got i got busy like, on those trips yeah i was like oh, okay i don't see a reality where this is any shorter than like 100 <laughs> minutes like and i i don't know i think i just so got you got overwhelmed, overwhelmed. Yeah. yeah i got overwhelmed and I that never... sucks but i put like different people's um footage out. Yeah, yeah when i made grant something i made uh gary murphy something and i think that might have been it but tim, oh no tim, tim tim, tim yeah tim stuff got incorporated into everybody's welland? welland yeah like everybody's stuff got incorporated. you mix it with stretch tour stuff yeah yeah like yeah so it, I did, nothing like that like your stuff saw the light of day everybody's stuff saw the light of day it was like but it just wasn't the story that it was supposed to be but hmm. okay we have an actual question here Uh-oh. are you ready for an actual question your first question of the day oh here we go here we go from jesse pro Probler uh-huh. asked, where do you see skating and more specifically wizard skating in 10 years? X Games, Olympics. <clears throat> imagine wizard in the Olympics before yeah. aggressive skating. What excites me is that I can't even imagine what it's going to be in 10 years. You know, it's like, I just think it's already progressed so much in the last, I don't know what it's been. I, I, it's It's been over five years, but like in the, last five years when it's i mean it's certainly been in my life for five six years or whatever but it's already progressed so much that i can imagine another five to ten again as as i was saying before as all these new companies are making these products a lot of these people are going to start experimenting in this style of skating and um eventually it's going to be people like you and and there already is like people that are come from a more traditional background experimenting with this style of skating and um that at a very high like uh, people from a more traditional background who skate at an extremely high level mm. experimenting with the style of skating mm. that's the important part and just seeing where they go with it is it, that's yeah i dude i don't know i don't know where it's good good question i i have exciting, no man. i have no idea what it's gonna look like in 10 years mm-hmm. or maybe it'll just die out probably not though <laughs> probably not i hope not yeah i don't think so i i i, I thought it was going to be a phase or a fad or something and leon knew that it wasn't and he was a visionary i i was like i couldn't believe yeah he called it and yeah he completely called it and now he's like killing it and there's like 15 different knockoff companies i don't want to call so them knockoff companies but there's like there's well, like all these like similar concepts yeah it's, it's not that because they're doing something happen. different yeah they're, they're they're all like but they're inspired from but they're inspired that. by wizard yeah. and i think they would be the first to say it. Every one of these companies, you know, mm-hmm. they wouldn't exist without that. So, and for anyone who's into more wizard wizard talk, we did have Leon Bassin on when mm. we first started Jump Street. Probably I don't know episode twenty ish, something like that. So if you're want to hear more from the man himself, go back and check that one out because yeah, that was a good one, also. Totally, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. He he's definitely more <laughs> insightful and knowledgeable mm-hmm. than I am. I love to have him on again too because that was three years ago or something yeah, yeah three years ago so to have like we we're talking about how the evolution of wizard is growing so much so fast in the beginning stages it's changed a lot since then i'm sure a lot of what he has to say is different too mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. i know 
I like thinking about that too because if you think about aggressive skating in like the short term, like you said five years for wizard blading, picture 1995 hoax two to 2000 brain for gone. Look at that gap yeah. in evolution of skating. Even look at aggressive Huge. skating now. Like look at look at <laughs> look at the products that are available right mm. now versus what was available even five years ago you know what i mean like like, or you could say yes seven to ten years ago it's just night and day you know like like yeah the levels of experimentation and and has uh yeah inspired all of this new technology Mm -hmm. which is only inspiring more experimentation which is inspiring newer technology it's just like right it's this loop of uh you know this cycle that that this yeah so it's dude i have no idea what just skating is going to look like in 10 years and mm. i'm excited to see it like yeah. yeah i probably won't be able to i won't be on the cusp of it anymore then but i'll be it'll be really exciting to see the younger guys bringing it mm-hmm. yeah i'll cool. definitely still be out there though totally i'll be skating for sure <laughs> at least it's wizarding because your body will allow you yeah, to do yeah. so just slow and mm-hmm. smooth movements yeah it's, yeah it'll just, if you think about skating 10 years ago 2011 you would have never guessed where it is now mm. like with our, us in our minds back then mm. would have never guessed what skating is doing these days no so to think about what's going to happen in the next 10 years you're right you're right by kind of saying like, like you don't know and also like the technological imagine. advancements sorry yeah that'll come with it like you know because yeah. i think like that um obviously played like clearly played like a tremendous role in that and like you mm-hmm. see what sola is doing like he's trying to make these little things and those things can have an effect on how everything's done man but then there's the conversation of uh like the pen where the pendulum swings right mm-hmm. so maybe it's swinging in this world of experimentation and, and it comes back equipment. to the moon comes back to the moon dude or or just goes back to like <laughs> the mook just super <laughs> simple mook. skating yeah you yeah. could say the, the uni wheel but even the mook is like one the wheel roller of- <laughs> yeah the one, one wheel on your skate <laughs> one one big ass 200 millimeter wheel <laughs> right. the pendulum might swing back to like overly simplified skating you know and i think there's some people that are already like kind of I was about to say there's some, yeah. some in there now. Yeah, yeah. I and, and I th- I like that. I like I like that there's like this and that's part of like the spectrum of skating mm-hmm. that's so interesting, like objectively interesting now, is that you have like the weirdos and then you have like the the classic, like iconic type skating, uh that, and it's all mm-hmm. taking place on the same level, yeah. on the same platform totally. and the same um yeah, ether, I guess, you know. But mm-hmm. uh yeah, uh, yeah, it's interesting to think that like maybe um, in some like reality, the these two things start like there's like a fusion of like aggressive. And That's what wizard, I think it's right? going to happen. Like, I think yeah, it's going to yeah. be some sort of combination. Yeah, of it where in the future. it looks like jet set radio type shit, you yeah. know. But then, but then I was that's kind of like where your mind like wants to go. But then if you just think of like culturally, like what a, what a, a, the backlash of that might look like, there mm. could be a backlash that actually influences where skating goes way more than what the technology is capable of and then it ends up going and just dumbing down it could it could just dumb down to like it could look really similar to what it does now or what it did five years ago or you know what i mean you yeah. don't you don't know and that that's also exciting too because like if you're just keep an open mind and 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 accept all of it for what it is and like the beauty that there's people still out there pushing it in their own way. And you're not the guy that's going like, Oh, where are the hammers or you know, why are the, why do their pants look like that or fit that way? Whatever, mm-hmm. whatever the thing that is they're complaining about, whether they're tight or baggy. Mm-hmm. My favorite is when you hear, when you see comments of people complaining about people wearing tight pants in like 2020 or mm-hmm. 2021, when it's just like, you that's how out of date you are. You're complaining about something that's already out of like, that's not <laughs> even like, a thing. Yeah, like relevant anymore. <laughs> that's fucking crazy. Um, but, uh, and the things are changing so fast, uh, right. You're just in the world anyway, you know, mm-hmm. things are just, yeah. But so I, I, yeah, I don't know. 10 years will be, <laughs> probably go through like three yeah. phases, four phases before easy. then. Yeah. yeah easy. easy. And generations too. Yeah, which is part of the thing also because different people obviously create these things. The way people skate, their own ideas, bringing it in. So the generations definitely play a huge factor in that, along with the technology you were talking about too. And we're gonna have generations. Yeah, right. Years. We're gonna have not just like two not three. Just us There's gonna be exactly farts talking yeah. about this. It's gonna be like people like younger than Parker talking about it, and there's gonna be people 
Yeah. Whose That's names exciting. We don't know yet. And you know what I mean? It, it might be like how you have like the nine year old in Korea or whatever, uh, like that are there. There's going to be kids younger than that. Mm-hmm. that, And those are the people that might go into wizard <laughs> and like next thing, the, the wizard brain fear gone. That's is a like wizard. Aaron Feinberg. Somebody yeah. who's nine who, years yeah, old. Yeah, right who knows? Now. Feinberg could make a comeback in skating and, do wizard blading instead. No, I'm just talking works. about like the the nine year old future Aaron yeah, Feinberg yeah, relevant the, to he, wizard. He's the silhouette, but it could also yeah be that be Aaron Feinberg. <laughs> it could so be actually not? Aaron right? Feinberg. No, why not? <laughs> um, we need some fresh blood though, as much as we love Aaron. Yeah, yeah. 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 we're getting that though. Yes, we do. We're take one or two more questions because the questions are starting to come in now. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm I'm feeling cool, but I'm sure we're hitting some crazy. No, time it's cool. We're I don't care. Like we're three hours right no. now. We're at like 16 and a half hours, but it's, it's fine. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna refresh my drink since okay. you got the do, questions. Yeah, yeah, do that. You, you might need a new water. one. Uh, I have a water, water here. Yeah. If you need. Let water. me holler at that. Go go holler at that. Degrees here, and then I wore a long sleeve shirt, looking idiot. Yeah. yeah. Um. So we have a super chat from Aldelega. Oh yeah. Thank you so much, Aldelega. Oh, yeah. Uh, he has a good question that I'm. It's a nerdy question. Oh, thank you, sir. Is it going to be a gear question? It is a gear question. And it's one that I want to talk about also. I, I wasn't trying to get too nerdy. I can't stand gear talk, but let's go. It's camera gear talk. Oh, God. <laughs> Which is even worse, maybe. <laughs> but let's get into this because I want to talk about this too. He says, Mike, how's the camera dilemma going? Will you upgrade to something made this decade or are you afraid of having more than six stops of dynamic range? <laughs> I'm trying to pop you up on the screen now. It won't let me. My computer's bugging right now. <laughs> but I am, I, I, I'm curious, too, because the standard now for skating is the HVX, yeah. which is made in, like, 2007 or six, something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Film 720, when that's been outdated in at least, like, 13 years ago. Yeah, yeah. And I, I've always, like, I've been... I know people film with it, and it looks good or whatever. I've been against... I own the HVX for a little bit, too, but I've been against ever buying one ever just because and i'm surprised someone like you who is a camera person Mm. that would still film with something like that and not want to get something more at least 1080 or like 4k or something like that like something a little more modern you know what i mean yeah something a little better in low light that's why i bought the canon c series camera and that's what i filmed uh i mean jp uses that too now from yeah yeah do you still have that camera yeah okay i used it today oh uh so yeah, I bought that camera because I got frustrated with how bad the HPX was in low light, um, mm-hmm. and that I, I maybe I was craving a little bit more of a cinematic quality in in some um, <clears throat> in some shots, I guess. Um, but to answer the Al's original question, which is where I where did I net out on the HPX dilemma? I think I had already bought an HPX another hpx before that poll that i put on instagram was even oh, is that done what he's referring to i put a poll on instagram like basically like should i just get another hpx or should i upgrade to something made in this decade and and um i think i've seen that and voted what did you vote for k okay. yeah of course yeah yeah uh yeah um i ended up going uh, by the way the vote the majority was to for hpx of course. Yeah, yeah. I but, feel like the majority of that are also people who don't know anything about filming. They're just true. people who watch skate videos that's and like, true. okay, this is yeah, yeah, good. yeah. That's true. Um, but the only reason I, I, yeah, I just I found one on um, on eBay that I I just like bought that day. It was just because I was about to film uh, a a project um, like around the time of like Bashi like a few weeks ago, and I just didn't want to have to like learn new camera and and figure out its idiosyncrasies while I was like embarking on like a new filming project I, but, I, yeah so so i i just i could get rid of that camera and still go 4k it's it's uh there's some people um that have intriguing setups right now that that have caught my eye dom uh, west i like dom west stuff do you know what he does for a camera for like skating filming skating no he has a gh5 okay. that he shoots 4k four by three Mm-hmm. oh yeah so it's stupid why and he has yeah. like a rig that he I, I think he made it. it's like a weighted rig so it's like solid yeah and you look at his footage and even though it's like a mirrorless little camera it doesn't look like a mirrorless mm-hmm. little, like if you watch 
Burma or any videos he yeah. made in the last like five years that all filmed with the GH5 with that setup. Yeah. And it looks legit as fuck. And it's 4K. It looks fucking crispy as hell. He's out. incredible. Yeah. He is incredible. Yeah. But I, I like I like that stuff too. I mean, that's me personally. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the, your footage and everything obviously looks amazing and it's your filming and everything is incredible too. Makes the skating look good and everything. Thanks. There's a different tool for a different job, you know. Mm. But I, I, I do personally think it's time for an upgrade. And, and as not as you specifically, as an industry, I yeah. think it is time for an upgrade. I think like the standard answer to that question that Al, I, I don't have to, Al knows <laughs> what I'm about to say, but it's, it's like the CCD sensors of the HVX and the HPX. Is yeah, something, I don't want to get too nerdy. Yeah, like it just captures motion in a way that... It's not a CMOS. Yeah, it's just, you know, but... That's just getting, we're, that's getting in the weeds, but yeah, like, mm-hmm. I, but there, there's, that's, uh, there has to be other options out there. I, you know, that's something that I've been wondering for years now and every time it's an expensive I, uh, yeah. endeavor, but there's, uh, there's, there's a, I've been seeing some, uh, some 4k setups that I'm, I'm, I am intrigued by and that they look really, really good and they don't look too, um, CMOS sensory and they don't look too um yeah like jiggly because they're so shot on such small cameras that's the problem with a lot of these like smaller video camera 4k cameras that are coming out is that they're just so lightweight that even if they have like the best image stabilization in the planet still like there's just some undeniably like jiggly quality especially when filming fish that's the problem with most of them but dom has like that solution figured out dialed it in with the weight yeah i think a lot of them i like i they just need to get their like setups dialed in and and um yeah there's there's definitely some that i've been seeing that are are really dialed in that kind of like caught my attention and but no promises right now i i just bought a brand new hpx it works like a dream nice my last one was literally being held together by tape uh the zoom stopped working the eyepiece had stopped working long long time ago uh (laughs) <laughs> yeah just, it's just insane like well, it's it's, and i camera. filmed like, a lot of projects it with it in that state like yeah that's uh so just fisheye with no zoom uh i was using servo or i was using the manual, manual zoom, zoom uh but then even the manual zoom was like getting stuck because i must have just smacked the I lens i think i used it to film something and you told me that i remember having to deal with that yeah it was i remember now pain in the butt dude. <laughs> uh yeah and, it, and every once in a while like the servo would work and then it would stop working and then it would only work to up to a point and then it would get stuck and you'd have to like literally move it with your hand mm-hmm. and it's amazing what you convince yourself is like normal to deal with mm-hmm. until you just actually have something that, that works, works. Yeah. And you go oh my god yeah. why the fuck did i deal with that for seven <laughs> yeah. months like oh my god making your life a pain in the ass yeah. for no reason yeah <laughs> jeez but i have a we have a question here okay uh let's see your take on this because i'm not too sure what they really mean but maybe you have an interpretation of this one take asks are shadow type skates relevant looking forward as they've been a curveball and aggressive in itself no Want to I, 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 I think I agree with that answer. Yeah. No, they are not relevant. <clears throat> yeah. Yes, to the answer being no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it's, I'll, I'll be honest. Like, I, I would lean toward no yeah. too. But mm-hmm. then, like, the only thing that makes me be like, well, like, pretty fucking cool idea. Wa- Walt is skating the shadows still, yeah. mm-hmm. and like, he's just like, I love him, dude. Yeah. 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 And like, for some reason, like. The things that you think you would have problems with, like like mainly like control on the wheels because they're so wide at the tops. Like Walt does has a really good job handling that. So, yeah, the, but I, but this, I know what you mean. You this don't is gonna need go back them. to our conversation then. That that this that's a great example of our conversation for that we me and you had in 2015 when I was saying yeah getting stuck in your ways because I I don't know if Walt has tried other setups, but mm-hmm. I. The little bit of that I do know of Walt. I, I mean, he's forty-one. Maybe put money on the fact that he hasn't yeah. tried other setups. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, he's forty-one years old. Yeah, you know and, what I mean. Like, and I don't know. Uh, but he, it's just like he thinks that this is the setup that works for him. But maybe he hasn't actually put in the time to experiment with the other setups that might really open not. his eyes to that. How bad the shot i mean that happened to me. <laughs> like when I was riding, when I first time I put Seba FRs, which is just a rec skate. Mm-hmm. And I, I was still skating shadows as aggressive skates, and I had I had yeah. to stop. I had to stop. I like would put them back on my skate uh, feet, 
and try to go skate and i just like i i suddenly i it just erased my brain of like how i was even able to do anything i had been doing on those skates for the last like i don't even know how many years it was at that point like seven years or something it was just i i would look at my footage and go oh my god this is all so bad (laughs) and i look so terrible i can see my ankles like bending down to the ground on every landing and it's just like it's a style sucker like not even because they look weird but like just the way they what they make your feet how they make your feet behave you know what i mean and like the and f- somebody like Walt is an unbelievable talent, right? Like, he always will be. Mm-hmm. I didn't know he was 41, but, like, you mm-hmm. would never know that no, just yeah. looking at his skating. Like, he's he's an unbelievable talent. He can skate anything. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. Yeah, he's one of those And he's going to make it look good. But the reality is is that there is a skate. There probably is a skate that is a little bit more suited to. And, and honestly, the transition that I made from Shadow was to a, a, a rollerblade solo. Walt should skate rollerblade solos he should transit he should just it, it, like if that's if you, that's you heard it walt yeah yeah like he, he, he should transition. This become a conversation about walt yeah, yeah. like <laughs> we just well, went, I don't went right know, to him but, about skating shadows yeah skates. yeah uh, or you, you brought him up right yeah well, I did, yeah, well I i'm just yeah, saying like it's yeah, brandon yeah, that we ended up talking yeah, about yeah but he walt but, more but it's than like the shadows. these little things that like you just oh no no skate works for me man that's just that's my skate and i said the same thing it's like the analogy with the the camera you were using when you and then they got the hpx like you're like how was i yeah 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 exactly no no 100 percent. yeah 100 percent. you know and and i i Again, I could be completely wrong. wrong uh, Walt may have experienced with ever, experimented with every skate on the market. I, mm-hmm. for all I know, I don't know, but uh, I suspect that maybe he hasn't, and that if he were put on, say, like the new solos, uh, he would he would probably go, "Oh fuck!" Like mm-hmm. I can do everything that I did on Shadows, and I can do it better, and I can f- I feel better doing it. I feel like I have support. I mean, I don't know how those skates ride, but. I, I he rode skate. my skates. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I don't know. I just don't like these. <laughs> That's my Walt impression. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good impression. That's a good one. No, nope. It was right. so good to catch up with him at have a seat. It was nice. Yeah, yeah. It, it was, was cool. really nice. Mm-hmm. Huge shout out, Walt Austin. Yeah. Walt, Walt's sick. Yeah. But, such an inspiration. Yeah. I, I think we're good on questions, though, for yeah. now. All right, that was, you know that was enough questions anyway. I knew there honest. wouldn't be that you many. Don't, you don't want to drag it on with the questions anyway. I think just a few is fine. The quality ones just to get a few of them out there yeah, those totally. are good the good ones thank you everyone for submitting your questions but um yeah do you have any like words of wisdom to impart in the skating community or <clears throat> thoughts or just perspectives to offer to um those who might be watching whoa that's a heavy question is it well i think that you gotta save We've the been going for 16 the hours <laughs> yeah I mean, we already got 16 well, hours. we're at like 17 now <laughs> oh fuck <laughs> um, <laughs> or shout outs you know shout outs people you worked with or things and everything. I don't know yeah. whatever or just or it, no. you can say nothing just say no uh, words of wisdom <laughs> just have fun skating and, and and stop being so critical of something that you just admit that there's there are things that you don't understand. And I think that's more of a universal, like societal thing. I feel like, like he's talking to me directly. No, no, <laughs> I am talking to you, but Jesus. I'm talking to no. the global community. I know you are a much more open-minded yeah. version Thank you. of the, of, 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 2015 of the Billy, boomers, of the former boomers, boomers. Yeah, okay. Thanks. The boomers. Boom bladers, boom bladers, uh, <laughs> boom bladers or blade boomers, blade boomers, blade boom boomers. life. Shout out captain boom, boom life. <laughs> yeah. But I think if you just understand and admit that you, like you, there's things that are happening on a, a a plane of this reality of like w- the reality of skating and yeah. stuff like that and, uh, and of all things that you just that you don't understand mm-hmm. um suddenly things are going to be a lot easier to digest right mm-hmm. like like oh they're doing this i don't know why they're doing it uh, you, you don't have to knee jerk to not liking that thing you can just under just admit that you just don't understand it and but that's okay you know what i mean and that but that i think that transcends into a lot of a lot of worlds uh, of, of just just being a little more open-minded uh towards people who aren't like you and people who are doing the thing that you think you understand in a way that you don't understand mm-hmm. you know and and but that's okay you know what i mean that's okay that would be the only thing and then shout outs i don't know jump street or jp butter tv word the bodega boys word <laughs> 
then skates, wizard skating. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? Rollerblade Tim hydrogen. Adams. Tim Adams. Rollerblade hydrogen. <laughs> just Boy, the wheels. Boys and Rock. Just the, the wheels. <laughs> and the skates. I don't know. The skates are probably good. There you go, Taurus. Hydras. Oh, let me see those fuckers. <laughs> but yeah, everybody, Taurus. First of all, thank you so much for being oh, a part of this. One, one last thing before we go. Uh oh. We made. Um, they're not for sale yet, but we made Enter the Bodega shirts. And they're not for sale yet. You no. guys all been rocking them. Yeah, they're not for sale yet. But I made you uh, Enter the Bodega. Oh, they're for us. Yeah, they're for you. Woo! Are you a large? Large. Yeah, no. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. Bodega boys. That's With our the enter. That's our local bodega. Um, that's the one in the corner. Mm-hmm. Oh, your place? Yep. That's right outside of my oh, apartment. Oh, dude. Does Tyler go in there? <laughs> you might. Yeah. <laughs> Tyler probably goes in this deli. Yeah, he probably does. Yeah. He lives in Torres's building. Is this the one on Taff? Taffy? Yeah. Oh, sick. This sick. Thanks yours, for the Billy. shirt. Billy, this is yours. I had to. Oh, Rob nice. gave us. Oh, yeah. Shout out Ghetto Community. That's the shout out, <laughs> dude. dude. This, this is, is fucking sick. I shouldn't even give this back to you. Mike Torres, dude, Santa so Claus. Nice, right? This is mine, actually. No! <laughs> dude, shout out. Oh, shout dude. out. Thank you so much. When are these going up for sale? Uh, and where can people buy them? Very soon. You'll sick. See. Yeah, I we'll don't see. have any info. I don't All right, have stay any tuned info to yet, yeah. Mike Torres' Instagram. We're going to set up like M. a Torres 83 shop was it? and start putting out more Bodega Boy content. Um, that, yeah. There's going to be more in the future. They're We're, good shirts, too. And, you know, I'm assuming to buy more shirts, we get more of your work. We want to encourage this guy to yeah. keep on making cool stuff. It makes our thing look cool that we really love. Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah, make cool shit and uh, make cool shit that can go along with it. And I think that's what a lot of people are doing in skating right now. And mm-hmm. I'm really excited about that. Like, basement. Oh, yeah, shout out basement. I was about to say you're wearing a basement shirt. Every time they put out a new line, we get treated to an incredible piece of art you know in their skate videos and that just makes it so much more special and you want to support like you, you know, it's not just you want to support you want to be a part of it right like with spacement when totally. that came out when galazzo came out you want to be a part of that you know like that's just yeah you're it, really what, buying into their brand when you per- support their momentum totally. with them you know what i mean like mm-hmm. you want to be a part of that totally. like yeah like that's that's I love it, man. Any like FTS stuff, like they put out this new video. They got a new line that goes out with it. Tate, um, which is the Barcelona guys, mm-hmm. but Balas Perdidas, shout out, shout fuck, out, yeah, huge I mean, shout yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, like if I had to shout out anybody, it's just like the brands of people who are just fucking killing it right mm-hmm. now. Um, Dunce too by by ba- the Basement guys came out and yeah, Balas. Those guys just yeah. everyone just putting in killing work. It. It's I love so it. good. Yeah, these are the people who are really making skating shine right now for sure it's cool because i feel like you guys too like get inspired as filmers and editors like get inspired by each other and skaters get inspired by each other's work and get like you know motivated and then it's it's like that cycle you were talking about of like you know make a cool like technology and skating and then it adds to the skating and then it makes more technology but it's like the same thing with videos as well yeah and yeah exactly there yeah i yeah i hope it, it would be cool if like my videos can inspire more videos or people to make other videos that are cool that will eventually inspire me and we just can compound and just keep making cool shit that inspires each other and inspires people to skate in new ways and try different things in like filmmaking and promotion and yeah oh i don't know i don't really know where i'm going with that thought but yeah i love it i'm, yeah, just, letting, yeah, I'm yeah. just letting you go <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah they didn't didn't quite know but yeah uh yeah i yeah. mean yeah th- that's what it's all about right like totally. yeah why why do it if it's not um yeah not to inspire totally. I guess. yeah well, well th- thanks for inspiring and helping everyone else out too all the <laughs> filmmakers all the skaters out there all the Little wizard bladers out there who aspire the to be like wizards, the, the future, nine-year-old wizards, future Aaron Feinberg's of wizards, <laughs> yeah, right. or future Aaron Feinberg on wizards. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have a last-minute super chat from Mere Mortal, so thank you so much, Mere Mortal. Um, thank you, Mike, again for joining us. Thanks to our uh, sponsor for this episode, Blank by Rollerblade. Everyone, check out the new Sean Keen Pro Model Skate coming out. Um, yeah, and thank you everybody for watching. We'll see you all in the next one. Peace. Cheers. <laughs>